Project Command. Stand by a power transfer. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. This is a special presentation of Caravan to Midnight, featuring a man I've uh, come to know over many years as being exactly as he presents himself to be, a researcher. And his research deals with many aspects of what we would call the quantum realm. He is Norbert Heuser. I have known him now for some years. He introduced me to... Uh, well, Pico Wave technology in, a, in the form of a device that actually produced an effect that I've told people about many times, and that was a, a comparison between wines, double blind, triple blind, worked every time. Flash this pen. This was his, his prototype, his first one. Flash this pen into the wine. Go over there and hide, hide in the corner so you can get two or three glasses. Just do one and then bring them. You bring two that are the same that have not been flashed with this light. Can't tell a bit of difference between them. Nobody could. Keep this going for a little while. 100%. When the glass of wine. That seemed to be the, the, best, the best medium for the test. It really did. When that glass of wine the one of the three, or the four, was presented to the person. In every case, the person said, this one tastes much better. 100% no exceptions, even worked on food. Now, this was several years ago, the better part of a decade ago. Since then, his product line has increased. In fact, I wear this SD-1 Human Protect all day, every day, I literally never take it off. Maybe once in a couple of months or something for a minute, and then I put it back on. Now, you must understand that this is this is very esoteric stuff. Many people will not be prepared to receive this information. However, it has been validated to my complete satisfaction. And I want you to know that nothing in this program is intended to diagnose or treat or cure or prevent any disease. This episode, this program, featuring myself with our guest Norbert Heuser, is for informational purposes only. You watch, learn, and then apply what you've learned as you see fit. Norbert is not a doctor. I am not a doctor. We make no health benefit claim whatsoever. This is information. Information, information, and I think you're going to love it, and I think it will astound you. So, without further ado, the man behind IPC and the products therein, Norbert Heuser. Hello, Norbert. This is going to be a good one. Thanks a lot, John. You're too kind. Um, I don't deserve that, but I appreciate it. Um, it's good to be back with you on the show because I love to work with you and your audience. Well, it's mutual. Now, maybe I should say a few words about myself as an intro. Um, where do I come from? Well, my school career ended up smooth, but definitely with high school. I never went to college or university. Thanks God. I was always right. interested in life. No, I was always interested in life. I had the privilege to meet with exceptional good people who were willing to share their findings. I listened, and most importantly, I asked questions. It's not about what you know, it's about what you do not know. And to find out what you do not know, you have to ask questions, the right people. And I developed the principle in learning about life. If I found somebody was crucified in the public eye, I would run to that person and ask for more information. 
as at least most of them were into something worthwhile. I traveled so far 35 countries. I started alternative medicine uh, as a passion 40 years ago. I turned my passion of alternative medicine into a full-time profession about 15 years ago. This happened by pure circumstances as I wanted to save my life and the lives of my family and members from the danger at this time of cell phones, means electromagnetic radiation. When I saw there was nothing offered in the market which truly worked, I knew there must be a solution. Um, so I worked on it and some years later I came with a solution, which of course was the start of my company. I never wanted a company. I did other things. I never wanted a company, but I knew that if I don't do it, the big industry doesn't do it and the government doesn't do it. So fast forward, when I tried to find healthy water, as I had a solution for like my radiation, I wanted to have healthy water. And in 2015, when I looked into a truly working water filtering system, I realized how fraudulent, how ignorant many companies operate. I was fed up and decided to develop my own concepts. At this stage, I had no intention to manufacture again another product, but I needed a solution for myself. Um, if you ever find my presentation today or at any time there's something missing or not correct, please let me know. I'll be happy to learn more and I will edit in my presentation at any time. I keep learning all the time. I will never stop learning until the day I die and I guess at that very moment, I will learn a boatload more. Looking back, I know that I, the road I took in my life was simply uh, my calling. My calling to improve the condition on our planet, whether this is accomplished with my technologies and my products or somebody else's, it doesn't matter. We have to improve this planet condition and it's getting worse, but not better in a, in a broader scope. My clear statement as for today's theme is, as we talk about water, there is no solid health possible without healthy water. And more than 90% of the audience out there drink poor, harmful water, full stop. I'll see this all the time uh, when I give live uh, seminars and I test people. I see it all the time. I invite them, bring the water you consume to the seminar and we'll test it on you and we'll see. But 90% have definitely unhealthy water, maybe even more. That's a bit um, my opening about where I'm coming from and how I got there where I am. Well, there's no doubt about it. Every day we hear about something else in the water that's really bad for you, all these chemical uh, contaminants and, I mean, all kinds of things. Even radionuclides are in there and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, by now I think everybody understands that without healthful water, there will be no healthy human being. Uh, the human body will be challenged on one or multiple levels from poor exactly. water. water. Water's a huge problem all over the world. Decent drinking water, that's, that's been going on for decades and decades. So yeah, we yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, let me give you, allow me to give you um, my introduction to water. And um, so we'll take it from there. Um, the earth is depleted, no question. The earth is depleted. Um, the water we drink is poor, to say the least. The air is bad. Our oceans are dumped. Um, nothing else. And we have a lot of bad things going on, all against mankind. And of course, against flora and fauna. We ourselves, to my definition, are the most endangered species there is. Um, and ourselves, we kill ourselves, we commit suicide. We keep dancing beyond the grave. Uh, we think it's all fine and dandy because we have sexy entertainment, uh, fancy, uh, nice stuff. Yes, we have a lot of nice things in this planet. I, I'm doing a seminar which is called, if you want to do it one day, uh, the main inventions of the last 200 years, the main inventions are all counter survival for this planet. We enjoy them. They're sexy, they're rock and roll, but they are against the planet. Um, so 
and the way we treat our planet, we deserve to vanish from this planet. Basically, every ant, every bee, every animal and plant does the right thing to survive. We are completely stupid. We commit suicide in steps and bits and pieces. We think everything we can do and we can finance, we should do. We should stay away from things which are insane, which have negative effects on nature on this planet, but we do them anyway. And uh, I have uh, my saying there, I have a gravestone, which I present in my presentation, which reflects everything I think. Rest in peace. Mankind is extinct because they believed the, the laws of nature were not valid for them. We think the laws of nature are not valid for us. We are part of nature, but the laws of nature are not valid for us. And we twist and bend them and stretch them beyond any control. And it's all because some people make money with it. It's simply always about money and control. It comes down to greed. Greed and neglectance of spirituality is the downfall of our planet. If we look at the Roman Empire, today they dominated the world. Tomorrow they're reduced to unimportance. Same thing happened with the Spanish and English Empire, the Germans and so on. Same may be happening now to the USA. The Chinese are taking over. They already took over many years ago. I said this in various seminars. I was spending a lot of my time in China. I was married to a Chinese lady. And I saw what was going on. And when I saw what was going on, definitely I left China not to go back. These societies were all dominant to a certain point. And then they fell and they missed the important points to be a successful and stay a successful, healthy society. Now, when the cell phones came out, no cell phone company had ever to prove that cell phones are harmless. Nobody ever. And they are harmful big time. We talked about this, you, John, we did in some of those shows, right? The entire world needs to be replenished with trees by the millions to create a better soil, to create a better climate, better water. We need more trees, billions of more trees, and we ignore it. People and government just ignore it. And to spread their 5G thread, let me call it the 5G thread, they even cut trees that 5G can work. Again, we are committing suicide in bits and pieces, and we seem to be too blind to see. Well, <clears throat> that's a bit of what I would like to say up front when we talk about water. Well, especially in America, you have nowadays in municipal water fluoride, arsenic, chloramine, chloramine, chlorine, a lot of stuff. Water has been discussed, especially over the past 10 years. Unfortunately, much of the information out there is wrong sometimes out of context there are what i call lies betrayals misunderstandings not knowing not understanding and many assumptions and john is very simple every time somebody assumes it means you do not know otherwise you don't need to assume my target today now is to make you see what in a complete conceptual understanding and trust me it's going to be a long show. I will present to you the entire subject water as I worked it out over many years of research. There are many totally different parts of information I need to walk you through today. You may even say at times, what the hell has it to do with water, a Greek? Well, you'd see more than you can imagine or may have even heard of it. I hope so, that I can give you new impulses. Mm -hmm. My talk this after the show, you know and understand more about water uh, than 99% of all medical doctors because medical doctors have never been taught on university about water, not about like my radiation and other subject. This, what I'm telling you today, to my definition and understanding, should be something which is should be taught in school from basics. We are taught trigonometry. I cannot remember in my life I ever needed trigonometry, and I'm pretty old. But to understand the concept of water, will have a major influence of your entire life, the life of your family, more than you think. Remember, only 3% of the water on this planet is called, is, is drinkable water. We call it the water planet, but only 3% is drinkable. And we're talking about this, we're getting into trouble there. And what is the first thing what we'd ask when we discover a new planet? The first thing we ask, is there water? 
this by itself already improves the importance of water. It's all screwed up. So please allow me now to bring you some light on the topic, and I hope you can agree, understand, and if not, please don't agree with me, or send me emails, give me your criticism, give me information I may not have. You, you can know, Norbert, it, it occurred to me, not to interrupt, but I'll just jump in here quickly just for a, just a bit of information that many of the caravanners have heard already. But over the course of a four-year university course to become a medical doctor, medical students will have not 18 course hours, but literally over four years, only 18 hours of study that has anything whatsoever to do with nutrition. Where water is concerned, how about zero? There is no study of water. No hours are devoted to water at all. Over a four-year degree at the most prestigious university you can think of, over four years, you will not, as a medical student, study anything about water. Yes. Just a little confirmation, nothing more. Go ahead. No, no, no. Great. Uh, I had just the, the introduction was a bit of a long monologue. I want to get it out of my chest and get people some crash course I'm coming from. Uh, no, no, you're completely right. And not only uh, water, they're not taught, for example, in um, like my radiation. Nobody teaches them the basics of dentistry. And to my definition, another show we can do, that without healthy teeth, you cannot be healthy. So if I would have been a medical doctor, the first thing I would do when a patient comes to me, I would look at his dental records. But that's another thing for another day. Well, so long story short, please, ladies and gentlemen, I have a website, a landing page. Uh, if you have any comments, any criticism, which I love, challenge, uh, confirmation, new information, please feel free to contact me on this landing website page and I'll be trying and happy to answer all the questions you have. All right? Improve, improve your life us. Okay. Yes, yes. So, um, without any further ado, we really step into the subject of water. And the first point is your own well. Because the first thing what happens typically when I give seminars some people come up and say first thing, well, it doesn't count for me, whatever it is, the problems, because I have my own well. And they don't understand that your own well as such means nothing. In fact, I tell people, if you have your own well, sounds good, but it only it's only meaningful if at least once a year you have your water tested by lab, at least once a year. Why? You are diving into under-earth water streams and you don't know 30 miles up from where you are what somebody dumps into the ground. And be aware as well, these water streams change their directions at time, over time. So it's not constantly the same quality, not constantly the same water. So if you have a well, great. If you want to be sure and healthy, once a year, if not two times a year, test it by a lab. Otherwise, uh, you're playing Russian roulette. Makes sense. There are entire oceans, rivers, streams, little trickles, <laughs> yes. uh, standing groundwater, and it moves. So, exactly. What, seep, what seeps from the surface of the earth seeps eventually down into the water supply. So, just a little reinforcement there, nothing more. Well, the MIT, I have to look up the exact number. The MIT did a study that... Every water which doesn't come from further down than, I believe it was, 1,000 feet, um, is contaminated. MIT studied that and, and published that, not me. I have to look up that number again, how deep they dug to find out when water is not contaminated anymore. I may fill that in later in the show then. Good. So that's about the whale water. Now, the next subject... I would like to talk about very briefly, very short, is called cold water, okay? Cold water, uh, especially in America, more than any other country I've ever been, cold water is promoted. I go to a restaurant and they give me a glass of water full of ice, full of ice. And right. when the Americans come them to Germany, which is my hometown, they complain that in the bar, they gave them only water with three ice cubes and they said are you kidding me three ice cubes 
I want ice. Now, what's the problem? The problem is our normal body temperature is supposed to be 98.6. Most of the people don't have this nowadays anymore. That's another subject for another show. But it's supposed to be 98.6 because all body functions are based on 98.6. This is God-given. Nobody invented that. It is how it works. The body needs 98.6 for all body functions. Now, when I drink cold ice water, it has typically a temperature of 42 degrees. 42. Now, the body has to compensate this low temperature of what you drink and has to do this under stress. So you put in your stomach, so to speak, uh, uh, like a bomb which explodes and the body has to deal with it under stress it puts the body under stress and i have another show where i say stress chronic stress is the only reason you can become sick chronic stress is the only reason you can become sick chronic stress can be mentally or physically and every time we drink cold water ice cold water happens so many things in your body which are degenerative now, uh, as I said, I spent a lot of time in my life in China. A Chinese person laughs about you. Well, they don't do it officially. They do it inside. Their face doesn't change if you drink ice cold water. A Chinese person, when it's very hot in the summer, he drinks hot tea or lukewarm water, but never ice cold water. And if your friend happens to be an opera singer, you didn't see an opera singer. You don't see them that they drink cold drinks, cold ice cold beer and water because they know they're going to damage their vocal cords. The knowledge is there. You just have to think about it. So when I came to the U.S., people were surprised that I ordered the water without ice. And uh, later on, um, when I developed my product, I brought typically in most of the restaurants in my own water or my water gadgets when you spoke about how you change your water. So that's what I have to say about cold water. If you want to improve your life, it's a very easy step, a very easy step to improve your life, your health. Stop drinking ice cold water. And I tell you, after a transition period, you will not miss it anymore. I hope you do. Well, that's absolutely true. Anytime that I have uh, grabbed, uh, I haven't done it in many years now, a bottle of deeply refrigerated cold water because I'm very thirsty and slug it down, instant stomach ache, instant, even if you drink it slowly. If you complete yes. that ball of water, you will have a stomach ache. At least that's what happened to me. So, yeah, I never really understood why, uh, here, drink some ice cold water with ice in the water. How can this possibly be good if your body's already overheated? Well, so I think I you just answered that. that question. No, it's, it's very simple. Yeah, look in history. For millions of years, people didn't drink ice cold water. They didn't know what ice cold water was. Right. <laughs> no fridges and one of the deep freezers. So, again, we live against nature. We think we can do whatever we want. Nature doesn't mean anything. Well, if God would have wanted us ice water, he would have delivered the fridge right from the day we were born 10 million years ago, right? But he didn't right. do that. Right. right, so talk about health. The next step, which may be for some of you uh, a bit extremer, um, is water and cancer. Now, this may be for some of you a long stretch water and cancer well what we're talking about water means is valid for every every illness and disease as i said earlier on to my personal opinion nobody can become be healthy stay healthy or become healthy without healthy water now let's look at cancer for example nowadays every third person is dying of cancer full stop the main reasons to my humble observation, experience, and opinions are the first reason to develop cancer is a mental instability. Keyword, psychomatics. In many cases, a loss within the family, like your spouse takes off with somebody else and leaves you alone, a loss of a child. All these things can cause cancer. There was this German doctor, Hamer, who has researched this topic for many years. And I was in contact with him 30 years ago. He researched causes of cancer patients. He worked in a hospital. And the hospitals told him, you stop this research or we fire you. 
He said, I'm not going to stop. I know I'm something. Because he interviewed cancer patients and found out that in most all cases, these people had these personal losses three, six months prior to start to develop cancer. They pulled his license. They put him into jail several times. Um, there's a long story. Interesting enough, uh, I have on my website a book called The Five Biological Laws of Nature, which is based on his principles of his findings. I don't sell books, but I encourage you on my website, there's a button, Books, where I recommend books which I think are worth reading. They're different. And uh, so I don't want to go further in his findings, but if you want to, want to know, look at his books and um, you can find uh, the explanation. There's no time now to do that, but again, I offer you the information. Good. Very good. Now, that's the main first reason for me. The second reason why people develop cancer is electromagnetic radiation. We, you and I, we have been talking about this topic many times on our show. And uh, John and I have seen people and information on my website, different talk shows we have done and webinars I've given under the, under the solutions I'm offering. Uh, on my website is a button, um, talk shows where I have some shows with John and there's a button webinars where I talk about these things. So number two is electromagnetic radiation. There's no question for me. It may have nowadays the biggest number one reason for cancer. Um, reason three is then bad water. Reason three is for me bad water. And as we go through the show, you can see why I'm saying that. Number four is we're all too much acidic. And number five, we have all an overload of toxins. When I was a child, a youngster, a young man, I did not know anybody who died of cancer. People just died in their bed or car accident. Things like Parkinson, I didn't know anybody had Parkinson. Dementia, I didn't know anybody had dementia. All this stuff just developed mainly over the past 50 years. We are able to screw up this planet, our health, flora and fauna, basically to the most part over the last 50 years. To my opinion, they will never find any medication to treat cancer. Never, ever. Never, ever. They look in the wrong direction. Well, the motivation is to find a medication which they can sell for money and make trillions of money. They have collected over the last 50 years trillions of donations and investments from government, always with one target, to give the patients something which has a patent on it, make money, but not to solve the problem. They will keep going in the wrong direction. I look at them, I smile, and I shake my hands and I believe. They're blowing stupid money, wasting burning money. They'll never get a result, to my opinion. Okay, that's my personal opinion. Where are the results of all these smart professor universities and these studies of trillions of dollars? No results, nonsense. They have a complete wrong approach. So, could we improve the medical condition of a person with water yes to my opinion yes it not only improves it but it's needed to make healthy possible changes absolutely dna the building blocks of life communicate with each other through water by emitting low frequencies electromagnetic waves there are many topics we talk about today and uh, then you see uh, the puzzle how it fits right so leaving cancer alone I gave you some basic crash information, to my opinion. Um, we will touch the next subject, which is very close to the subject of cancer, which is water and medical doctors. Water and medical doctors. Have you ever been in a praxis and the doctor asked you, hey, tell me, what water do you drink? Have you ever been asked by a doctor what water Not do you ever. drink? Absolutely never. No, or even how much, except rarely. Yeah. Um, so we said they have no education in water. Um, when doctors find their ways to my seminars, which some do, they typically come after and say, why were we not taught all about this in universities? What you're telling us today, they never explained to us. They taught us how to prescribe medication, but this holistic point of views and how the body works and dangerous EMF and what can be, we were never taught. Yes, but they never. most of them never looked into it. And I have a seminar which is called 
the good and not so good doctor. Originally, I call it the good and bad doctor. And a friend of mine says, no, don't be Norbert. Don't say it's too strict. Be a bit more kind. <laughs> <laughs> I changed it. The good and not so good doctor. Where I talk about what differentiates a good doctor from not so good doctor. But, okay. So the medical doctor never asks you about water. The only thing he may say, oh, I think you're dehydrated. Drink more water. That's a stupid sentence. Because as I explained to you in a few, it's not about the water volume you drink to be hydrated. It's not about the water volume. It's about the water quality. I explained that. Um, so in my seminars, I always test people whether they're hydrated or not hydrated. And I can tell you, a conservative finger, 98% of people I test are dehydrated. 98% of the people I test are dehydrated. This does not surprise me. Uh, in fact, uh, I've referenced this many times. If you go to the uh, if you go to the uh, internet and just type in symptoms of dehydration, oh, you'll see the symptoms, but you'll also see statistics. And according to you know, right, everything from Doctor Google is correct, but it comes close. Your your percentage is much higher. They are saying seventy five percent of Americans are chronically dehydrated, meaning dehydrated all the time, and the other 25% are just dehydrated off and on, so it would probably go to the upper 90s. That's a great observation. Yes, and it's of course a question of what you call dehydrated and how to test it. Yeah. Uh, I've it for 40 years with the kinesiology muscle testing where I can test uh, a patient and in, in five seconds he's dehydrated or not. And I hate to hydrate them, and then I can see what does it look uh, to be hydrated. So uh, I have this um, image here, what my thoughts are about doctor. It's very brutal, but my honest opinion. 95% of all doctors are ridiculous. They're just a shame. 3% of the doctors I consider good. 2% of the doctors I consider fantastic. And I had the privilege to meet these two and three percent people, especially two percent people, many of them, and I keep looking for them. And again, in this show, The Good and Not So Good Doctor, I explain the difference. So that's my opinion about doctors. I have no problem to say this publicly, officially, in the face of doctors. And I did it the other day, funny enough. A group of alternative holistic doctors called me on a conference call because they said, um, we heard about you and your technology. Uh, we have this group here. We work together. Can you tell us what you do and your approach? I said to them, well, look, before I go into this, let me give you my opinion about doctors. I don't want you later to find out what I'm saying in seminars and webinars. I want you to know, put the cards on the table. Here's my opinion about doctors. And I showed them the graph you just saw. And they laughed. They laughed their butt off. I said, well, what's going on here? And they said to me, look, we have a definition for doctors. And these doctors said, and quote what I'm repeating now, doctors are to the most part highly educated idiots. That's what these people said. All right, that about doctors and water. The next topic I would like to speak about is water, the importance of water. As I mentioned a few times today, Without water, nobody can become truly healthy. The most important topics in one's health is the personal, mental, spiritual, spiritual stability. People underestimate how the spiritual the, um, ability and awareness can help you to improve and to heal. The most important topic in the physical universe of human being, then people usually answer food. Food is the most important topic in the physical universe for mankind. No, it's not. To my definition, the number one most important topic in the physical universe is oxygen. It's the most important ingredient for our healthy life. The second most important ingredient for healthy life, and people answer again, oh, then it's monthly food. I said, no. People overestimate healthy food. The second most important is water. So right after oxygen, it's about water. Water is more important than food. Food comes only in a third. But the way people act 
oh, I eat healthy food, I eat organic food, and so on, so on. Well, organic food is nice, but nowadays it's already questionable. Uh, how organic is organic? And I tell people, if you if you drink unhealthy water, 50% of the organic food money you, you spend is already wasted right from the get-go. Uh, basically, you kill your digestive system and consequently your health. The DNA, the building blocks of life, communicate with each other through water. As I said, by emitting low-frequency lake migration waves. I dare to suggest that most of our audience today consume bad water. But the same counts for hospitals. You're in hospital, you become healthy, and they give you bad water. The same counts for restaurants who cook with bad water. Now, there's something which is called pristine water. Um, pristine water, the original water on this planet, let's say up to, let's say 300 years ago, maybe 200, maybe 200 years ago, you could drink any water on this planet anywhere. It was fully blessed with high level of energy and all the ingredients you needed. But the percentage of people nowadays to have access to this prestige, prestige water, um, sorry, pristine water, these people, how many? Hardly anybody. So as we cannot have access to it, it means we need to treat our own water. We may, we may have to make our own healthy water. The water from the city is not healthy, and we'll talk about water in the stores is not healthy at all to the most part. Good. Um, the body has emergency programs. The body has emergency programs, and these emergency programs are, for example, fever. Fever is not an illness. It's an emergency program of your body telling you, hey, something is going wrong, and the body tries to fix it. Pain is not a problem. It's an emergency program. If the, if the body makes you feel pain, that means something is going on here. If you have a pain in the abdomen, well, if the pain would not knock on your door, how would you know something is going wrong? You wouldn't know, right? Sleep is an emergency program. I've tried two, three times in my life to overcome sleep, and sleep kicked my butt. I fell asleep while driving in a car. It happened once, I don't know, for a second, half a second, I don't know, nothing happened, but it was a lesson. When your body has a need for sleep, you cannot ignore it endlessly. You will suddenly fall asleep without noticing and without wanting to. The body takes over and says, this is emergency now. I don't care what you want. I don't care you want to drive home. You cannot. You need sleep now. Another one is hunger. Every time you feel hunger, the body tells you, hey, you're dying. If you don't eat now, you will die. I need these nutritions and vitamins and minerals. I need them now. And the other one we're talking about now is thirst. Thirst is an emergency program. The body tells you, look, you are in need of liquids, of water, of good water. 300 years ago, it was not your need of uh, uh, orange juice uh, or, or Red Bull. No, your need of water. Right. Right. And uh, so water thirst is an emergency program. And you got to treat your body accordingly that the emergency program will be handled. And this is how it works with water and the emergency program. All right. Any questions so far? No, no, I'm right with you. Good. Thank you. But kick my butt if needed, you know. Kick my butt if needed. So let's talk about the next subject, which is the water market. Yes, there's a water market. Oh, yes. And the water market is enormous, and there are things going on, not always for the good. There are hundreds of companies out there who offer heaven on earth with their water um, or protect you from cell phones, electronic radiation. And most of these companies don't do what they promise. There are millions, billions of products on this planet which are a disgrace. And I'll be happy to see if there are hundreds and thousands of companies or 10,000 companies which make great products. I don't know personally the expression competition. I always say other companies who make good products as well. I love that. We cannot have enough good products, good companies, good manufacturers on this planet. They're not enough because most going for crap. 
cheap crap and with no quality. Um, if it's my product or somebody else's product, when we talk about water now, it doesn't matter. It's very simple. If it works, it works. We used to say in alternative medicine, who heals is right. But go and start using truly healthy water. The problem is that the consumer, the average consumer, cannot judge what is healthy water. So that's a part of the show to make you understand. Um, you can say that clearly that most municipal water in the communities is bad, poor water quality. Even water most solely in stores and even health food stores is unhealthy to my opinion. To what percentage? 70, 80, 90, 95%, whatever. Main reason is that most sold water in bottles is what is called reverse osmosis water, which to my opinion is the devil, and we'll talk about this towards the end of the show. Why reverse osmosis water, to my humble opinion, is the devil. And when they offer in those uh, food stores or even health food stores, they have these big pump stations where you can put a gallon of water, pump it, and you pay by the gallon. Most of these pump stations are, again, reverse osmosis water. And why is it bad? We'll talk about it by the end of the program. Now, okay. water used to be handled and controlled by the government. And nowadays, that's not true anymore completely. Um, big water companies, big companies, primarily such as uh, Danone in France, Coca-Cola, and um, what's the Swiss company name again? Um, Christ, um, Nestle? Nestle, thank you a lot. Nestle, thank you, thank you. Um, they control the water. And how they do it, we'll talk about this in a second. And uh, so mark, wa what is a market? Don't forget, like oil, like cigarette, like drugs, water sure. in the market. Sure. And they do all kinds of tricks to, to do that. And this is why I call it the control of water. It's not more only a market, it's a control of water. So how does it happen? Years ago, you used to have hundreds of small little companies producing water, hundreds, all over the places. Um, and everything was seemed to be going fine. And people think nowadays water is not a problem. I tell you that water is, we have a crisis with water. You, do, you may not realize it because you open the, open the water tap, it seems to be okay, right? Wait to see. Um, we are in a water crisis, and a bigger crisis than energy ever would be. Um, who controls the water? Not the government anymore, really. You have these Coca-Cola, Danone, Nestle. For example, Coca-Cola has uh, about 135 beverages in the market. 135. When we think about Coca-Cola, we think about there's one product, right? Um, now, the water problem consists of the questions of price, quality, and amount available especially for the underprivileged. So what these companies did, systematically, they turned, to my opinion, small companies into bankruptcy or bought them out. They bought them flat out. So they got themselves self shelf space. So you see this water product, blah, 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 for the last 10 years on the shelf. What you don't realize, if you would turn the back of the bottle, you see who owns that company. And you see that mainly these three companies own these water companies. And what they did, again, to my opinion, they bought these brands, which a lot of people think about greatly. I don't I don't quote any names here now. I don't want to bash somebody. But names, you all say, oh, yeah, that's a great water. That's a good, healthy water. Yeah, it used to be. I agree with you. It used to be. But these companies took over, and they filled in their cheap, compromised water to make more profit. And they got themselves shelf space. Turn the bottle and read the label. Um, so these companies then, besides buying up the small companies, they bought the water rights in USA, Canada, India, Africa, by pumping groundwater, and the pumping the groundwater, the groundwater level sank. And uh, there is a woman, I love her, Marion Schimmelfanik, a German woman, she wrote a book. Unfortunately, that book is not available in English, only in German. The title translated says, 
the water and beverage mafia. The water and beverage mafia. And uh, today I will quote a few things from uh, her findings. He's just phenomenal. I love him. So here is a quote from the CEO of Nestle. He says, Mr. Maucher says, he was, he was president or CEO from 1990 to 1997. He says, water is getting scarcer worldwide. That's why we want to control the sources. Again, water is getting scarcer worldwide. That's why we want to control the sources. And his follow-up man, the president of Nestle Sam said, water is of course the most important raw material that we still have in the world today. Again, water is of course the most important raw material that we still have in the world today. It's about whether we privatize the water supply for the population or not. Guess what? So Nestle bought pumping rights in California. They had the rights in a year to pump 26 million gallons of water. Keep that number in mind. 26 million gallons of water in a year. Yeah. You got an idea, John, how much they paid for that? I have no idea how much they paid for that. $700. Sounds like a good deal for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Especially California, where they have uh, water droughts all the time, right? And of yeah. course, the water levels sank. Now, they did the same thing in the uh, village of Hope in Canada. 70 million gallons a year. Of course, they paid more money for that. They paid $800. Uh. Right? They paid $800. Nestle, good food, good life. Wow. This is a Saturday Night Live comedy. Now, if you want to learn, what does that mean? What does that mean? Look at these figures here. I hope you can read them. So, I made a statistic to show you if you buy bottled water. Let's take in the middle, Dasani. Dasani is a Coca-Cola brand, most likely the most sold bottled water in America nowadays. The cost for a gallon of Dasani is $1408. <laughs> Compare this with your gas prices, which are high, but that's... So you pay for a Dasani $14 a gallon. Now, if we consider a family of four people, they need four gallons of water per day to drink and to prepare food, coffee, etc. Not to take shower. A typical family of four needs four gallons a day. In a year, with Dasani, that counts up to $21,000. I believe that most of the people are not aware how much money they spend on bottled water. I'm certain of it. And in a five year, that means $105,000. <laughs> in 10 years, they spent $210,000. Right, and I see people schlep all the time in the food markets and so on, these big boxes of 20, 40, whatever bottles of water at the time, and so on and so forth. People don't think that's not no, not not new, I guess. But I want to show you this overview here um, to get you an idea, to get you an idea if somebody buys bottled water. We're talking about later about the plastic ones, but just the idea of how much money you spend. And I compared it with a good water filter system uh, where you spend in a month $510 on the top line in five years, 2,500. Okay. So people don't want to invest money in creating their own healthy food, their own healthy water. Food creating is difficult, depending on where you live and how you live. But water, to create your own healthy water, no. This is not difficult at all, not at all. But then they refuse the idea of um, buying into the machinery, into products to make healthy water, um, which nowadays with my technology is not a big miracle anymore. 
but uh, it's either a one-time investment and finance it like a, a new roof or a new car. They'd rather buy a new car in 10 years, three times, <laughs> saving $120,000. What a joke. All right, this is about the control of water. And the control of water is happening through these big companies, and it will become worse. It goes that far, like in Africa. They bought water rights. They pumped the groundwater. The groundwater level sinks, and the farmers, in consequence, have a problem to work their farms with water. Their wells dry out because they're not deep enough. And then they can buy 10 minutes later in a, in a supermarket their own water fill up in plastic bottles. Yeah. That's a perversion. That's yes. perversion. That's exactly what it is. The next perversion I have here on my list are plastic bottles. Plastic bottles is a perversion. Mankind is stupid enough to produce and to use plastic bottles, which end up typically in the landfill and in the oceans. Mankind deserves to vanish from this planet. Why do you use plastic water bottles? We have to change our lifestyle. Plastic straws, plastic water bottles should be not be used, even not bought anymore. I don't refuse plastic. I mean, plastic water pipes in the house and uh, in the bathroom and everywhere are very practical and last forever. But that plastic bottles, we dump the very next day and ends up in the ocean, in the soil. We need to force the manufacturers to stop producing these products by not buying them anymore. Yes. If we would have an ethical government, if the ethical government would have stopped this long time ago, and it sounds maybe harsh to you, but people who use plastic bottles do not deserve to live on this planet as they're actively participating to destroy the planet and future lives for your children, grandchildren. You actively destroy this planet. If you have children, well, you have grandchildren, you use plastic water bottles. Sorry, shame on you. You yes. do not care about the future. If you would care about the future, you would not do that. I'm not talking only about your own future. But the idea, my children um, are living with this bullshit we're leaving behind. Um, and to my humble opinion, we are born again. And when we are born again, we inherit the crap we left behind. So it's terrible. This is what typically looks like on the seaside in rivers and oceans. These are the big plastic pots. You can see them. They're not as dangerous for now until they turn into microplastics. And the microplastics are the ones which end up, again, micro, very small, in the air. They're so light, so small, they end up in the air. They end up in the food. They end up in the ocean, in the fish, in the seafood. They end up everywhere everywhere and we are just committing suicide we don't feel it immediately so we think we can get away from it if you put your brains on for just one minute and look from the bird's eyes of you you see how devastating this is which brings me to another topic a small one which is called spring water when i give uh, seminars people say all the time oh I drink healthy water. I said, okay, so what do you drink? I drink spring water. I can clearly see how many people are taking for complete idiots and are brainwashed. They have nowadays these great fantastic names on those water bottles, polar water, glacier water, ice water, whatever name they come up with. I don't want to quote them all. It's just uh, between an embarrassment and a joke. And of course... You know, the, I mean, of course, the name spring water comes up all the time. People think because of their bottle is printed spring water, it's, it's got to be good, it's quality. No. And when I ask them what you drink, oh, I drink spring water, it comes up with certain pride or quality. The expression spring water is not related, attached to any quality standards. Nothing at all. 
in stores, supermarkets, even health food stores. They have all these pumps and uh, they sell the waters. And as I said, most of them is reverse osmosis water. And they have even the guts then to say it's spring water, which is not. Spring water, we would think by the definition, oh, we're going to a natural spring, right? The water comes out of the natural spring and then uh, we fill it up in bottles. Right, John? Is yeah. that the idea we have with spring water? Yeah. But it's not. It is not. It's just a trick. It's just a marketing yeah. stunt. It's a marketing slogan, nothing more. Spring yeah. water, really? <laughs> Who's spring exactly? And people fell for it and they think that's what it is. All right. On a more deeper note, we're getting deeper into this theme now. We will talk about water and cells. Now, this is a very, very hot topic. Cells. We always learned that about 80% of our body is water. Maybe 70. When we are babies, there's 90. When we get older, it goes down to 70, 60. Uh, and these 60, 70, 80%, whatever it is, it does not sit in the bladder and not in the blood, which is 90% water. But it sits in the trigillions of cells. This is where the big water amount sits in our body. And the cells are the building blocks of our body, of our life. The cells produce the energy that enables us to live. We could not exist without the work of the cells. The cells are our power plants. The cells produce your energy, your life, not the steak you eat, but part of that steak, which end up hopefully healthy in your cells. To do that job, the cells need nutrition, minerals, vitamins, trace elements, oxygen, and especially water, but good water. The cells do not accept bad water. Beer, coffee, sodas are based on water, but they're not deliver water into the cells. And in fact, the cells refuse those liquids. So first off, wood water is needed to create energy. The microchondria are your nuclear power stations, fantastic computers. They as well create water. Now, once the cell creates water, and it got good water to do that, there is a waste, a toxic waste, and this has to go out of the cells. And again, the good water is needed to kind of bind these toxic waste and flush it out from your body. And then we need fresh water again. Now, the good, healthy water, we will talk about in a minute, has what we call a hexagonal structure. Uh, the hexagonal structure or fine class of structure is able to bind to encapsulate the toxic waste and flushes it out. These are the two main functions of water in your body to supply healthy water to create energy and to encapsulate toxic and flushes it out. The better the quality of the water, the better these functions. And the better in consequence is your metabolism and the better is your health. The big point in all this is, does water penetrate your cell membranes? Can it do that? And if it only can do that, if the water is fine, clustered, equal, has its hexagonal structure, that's the key issue. Fine clustered water or hexagonal structure water um, is needed. And we'll be talking about this um, in a few minutes. No, no, I'm too fast. No, it's good. Right. So before I go deeper into the water problems and explain to you how it all works and gets together, um, we have to, I should um, explain a bit of my water products so later on you can better understand what I'm doing, where I'm coming from. On, I have two water products, and these water products are based on quantum physics. And quantum physics is a technology my countryman Max Planck developed he didn't invent, he just observed and he developed and gave it the name. Quantum theory is the basis of modern physics that explains the nature and behavior of matter and energy on the atomic level and subatomic level, the smallest parts of this universe. And in quantum physics, everything is connected with everything else. In traditional physics, it was either rays or wave. And Max Planck said no, and he discovered it can be both. 
Quantum physics knows no time, no space, no left, no right, no up, no down. Matter and mind are intertwined frequencies. We think we can separate the way we think and the way we act. It's all connected. If we don't see it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So through the show, I will talk here and there about my two products. What happened was, as I said before, in 2015, I was trying to find healthy water, and I couldn't. I found a company which is very popular and very known out there. When I dug in their literature, I found things which didn't match up. And then I went and sent them an email with two particular questions, very straight questions. And when they came up with the answer, I knew they were full of it. So I had to solve the problem. Um, I knew at the start of the solution was not another water filter system. There are plenty of water filtering systems out there. Mostly bad, very few good. And I know most don't cut it, so I had to go a different route. I'm reducing you quickly my two products, which I designed to accomplish these goals. So whenever the problem is solved, it means somebody else's product out there, when you use it, doesn't matter. So the first product I came up with is called W300. And the W300 is a blue uh, tube there. It's for both residential and commercial locations, farms, nurseries. And the unit does not, being included in your water system, if that water pipe, that pipe here, uh, represents, well, if that water pipe here represents the water coming into your house. You just take that unit and put it on that water pipe. And sitting on the water pipe, that's all it has to do. No water is running through it. By just touching the water pipe, which can be plastic, metal, or whatever it is, copper, it doesn't matter, whatever it is. Uh, so this is sitting on the water pipe with this piece here of a cable. Even so PVC, have... Norbert? PVC, no problem? <laughs> No problem. Everything, no problem. Okay. Um, so you can put it there, as here a better photo shows, um, and that's all. Now, the beauty of it is, besides it's warranty for 10 years, and what will it do, you will see later. Um, you can use it for an entire house. You can use it for a house with 20 parties, 50 parties, it doesn't matter. You can use it for a farm with 5,000 cattle, a nursery, it doesn't matter. The volume of the water which is controlled and approved is endless of floating water. Um, it's pretty magic. And what it solves, you will see it during the show, um, it's, it's for most people, it's mind-blowing. And I, I try to do it in steps, and you can digest it. Good. So when I designed this for the entire house, I realized that I needed a mobile solution because I myself was traveling throughout the year, four or five times Europe and Asia. And I wanted to have good water when I'm out there. Okay. Um, so I came up with another product, a mobile product. This is just this pen here. Looks like a pen, a silver solid rod, right? And all you do is you either put that rod in water or you just take a container whatever the quality of the container is, and hold the rod against the container. And if you hold it against the container for one minute, all the water in the container is going to be handled in the way I will explain to you later on. And it does the same thing like the big blue thing. With one limitation, you can only do it for up to one gallon, not floating water, sitting water in a container up to one gallon. And all these things can only be accomplished by the technology of quantum physics. You cannot do this in a regular physical universe. That doesn't work, right? All so right. these products do everything which we'll be talking about here in the show. Norbert, you know, I must say that, that over the past months, the quantum plane and quantum physics 
not so much quantum mechanics. That's a, that's a subject for another time. I haven't devoted much mental energy to that, but I think people are more prepared now to understand that this discussion of uh, things quantum, quantum this and quantum that, this is a real thing. This isn't some nebulous, imaginary musing. Uh, I have described it to the audience, in in my view, it, in its exact, I mean, you validated it with a comment that you made earlier, that it's not, there is no up, there is no down, there is no time, there's no back, there's no forth. I reduced it to, it's simplistic, of course, I suppose, but it is where everything is created. It, it's where things form outside of the restrictions of time. And the, the, as the months and now years have gone past, this has been validated to me repeatedly in most unexpected ways. Because when you and I first met, I thought, okay, I'm listening. I don't you know enough about this, but, but I can get up to speed pretty, pretty quick enough to be able to participate in a conversation with you without being an actual quantum scientist. But uh, this, is, this is quite amazing because, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, and I'm going to say it again. This presentation is for information purposes only. There is stuff, let me just digress for a moment. There is stuff all over the place in that field over there, in your backyard, over there in the neighbor's hedge, that actually constitutes nutrition. But you cannot claim, you cannot go and harvest these things and, and make a, a, a blend and say, this is good for the human being. It will improve your health. It's against the law to do something like that. Now, when you get out into the other fields, of exploration such as, well, for example, this SD1 Human Protect I have around my neck. I cannot tell you this will absolutely do A, B, C, D, and E. All I can tell you is the difference in the effect on me personally and people around me who have also had this disc in close proximity to themselves, the effect that it has when they've worn it and then they take it off for a little while. So while a government governing authority cannot or will not, and certainly not without charging a great deal of money to do so, they cannot say, we as a, uh, as a branch of the government have uh, issued this decree. Yes, this works or that doesn't work or this is good for you or that doesn't work for you. This is part of the breakaway civilization. The breakaway civilization occurs in the mind first, which, by the way, is also operating on the quantum level. Just like in your dreams, you have no sense of time in dreams, do you? No. If you do, you're the only one I've ever heard of who does. So, part of this breakaway way of thinking about existence, about reality, we need some validation from somewhere, don't we? Somebody to Say, all right, we've heard you. We see the, uh, the results of your work. Now, let us test it. And you've heard me mention the Bisa Institute of Austria many times. And the long and the short of it is, I have say, stated many times, they will not certify anything unless it does what it's claimed to do. They simply will not do it. And there is a limitation on how long they will validate these claims. So they try to stay as absolutely objective as humanly possible. And so with this in mind, and I say again, none of the things that we're talking about, none of the things we're talking about today are intended to do the following. Diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. It is simply information provided to you, and after that, it's, it's on you. Now that said, there is the Bisa Institute of Austria. So Norbert... Tell us about the Bisa Institute, maybe how it came into existence and, and why it is as significant as it is to someone like yourself who is really going out into areas. If they're unexplored, okay, if they're deeply explored, but nobody talks about it much because of the implications, whatever they may be, how is it that the Bisa Institute exists at all? And how did you get together with them? And what was the result of that association? There it is. Just a few notes, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I'm trying to keep it short. Okay. The, the Visa Institute in Austria, I, I didn't know. I had no idea they were existing. Um, over the last 15 years, I was only able, before the prior to that, I was only able to prove my technology works 
with the help of kinesiology or muscle testing. Now, I'm doing kinesiology muscle testing for 40 years. Yeah. And some people accept it, some don't. I have a separate show over kinesiology to explain what it really is and how it works, which a lot of people don't know. And unfortunately, some practitioners, when they use kinesiology, they don't explain the patients what are they doing and how it works. So I took it up and made a, a webinar about what kinesiology is, and you can find it on my website, and we can do a show one day if you want to. So I could only prove it. So I was in a, in a, in a talk show in Switzerland, and the talk show master who checked the products and blah, 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 he said to me, your products are amazing. I said, yes, I know, but I have a problem. I can only prove it with kinesiology. And then he said, no, 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 hold on. There is the BISA Institute in Austria. They test scientifically when people make claims or make suggestions like you do, whether it's true or not. So I called the BISA people uh, back in America, and they said, oh, yeah, we know you from various talk shows. You do interesting stuff. I said, yeah, but I would need scientific proof. And I have uh, about 30 products. Can you test them? And they go, what? You're not testing 30 products. I mean, it's cost you an arm and a leg. I said, look, I want to differentiate myself from most of the companies out there. I, I, I cannot face my children and grandchildren one day that they say, oh, you lied to the people. You deceived them. Uh, you betrayed them. Uh, and I said to my children always, if you go through the world and you never need to be afraid to meet somebody you met in the past and this person can finger point you, uh, you live a happy, good life. So I said, look, I want to do that. And, uh, and if I fail the test, tell me where and how I failed so I can improve my product. So they tested all the products. And uh, bottom line is that from all the products, I have more than 1,800 pages of certifications, of testings and certifications. And they certified every single product. I didn't fail at all with no product. So that made me very happy, very content, and made me safe that I'm doing the right thing from that. Um, and then a very good start for me to expand my company and to set up there because I cannot muscle test every person in this world. Again, not everyone accepts it. So Bisa tested the products. And, um, and again, all these, all these tests are on my website. Uh, people can read them. Uh, there's no guesswork. I wanted potential customers, regardless they trust in me or not, uh, I'm real or not for them. I wanted them to say, look, here's a scientific test no discussion. And if sometimes smart people come up with some stupid, really stupid approaches, uh, I said, look, use the test, read it. It says it all. So the other day, I bought 20 products on Amazon, which all claim that they protect you from electromagnetic radiation on cell phones. We bought 20 products and we had in front of a camera a double-blind study in kinesiology. A doctor did that for me. I didn't do it double blind study and except my product all products failed and uh, and I didn't bash those companies I didn't name their names I just wanted to see look they're all promising and they don't work and the big problem for consumers is who can I trust uh, right. not so long ago the um, Whole Food company uh, very known has his own water brand called Starkey which is a glass bottle which I appreciate it and then they found out, well, the Starkey water at Whole Foods has truckloads of, uh, what was it? Truckloads of arsenic. And they had to pull all the bottles from the shelves throughout the entire Imperium. So I wanted to give my customers the comfort of knowledge, of confidence. What Norbert Heuser says, it's real. And... Um, that's all I can say. The Visa Institute people are incredible, incredible technology they developed. And I'd just been with them uh, four weeks ago, uh, and I had my entire family with me, and I had my entire family tested in the Visa Institute, their health conditions. It was amazing. Maybe something for another show. So here I can give you how does it look like when Visa Institute tests, okay? Well, here's the way the Visa Institute typically tests. And again, I have all these tests on my website for every product. I give you here just an extract of such a test, okay? Um, they, they, they took the water unit uh, for this testing. They tested a person's condition with the water the person is drinking right now, nowadays, 
in their household. And they here you see a test of lung, skin, large intestines, uh, stomach, uh, organ, pancreas, bladder, kidney, lymph, allergies, and so on. And you see these blue bars. Everything in blue is degenerative, more or less. You see 10 and uh, 30 and 20 and so on. Everything in blue is degenerative. Um, and besides these topics here, they had then um, liver, heart, small intestines, blood circulation, endocrine system. So they tested the person, and everything which is degenerative is blue. By the person drank that water, they usually drink. Then they introduce my my product uh, in the in the cycle, and the water was consumed by this test product. By this, sorry, by this test person. And after some, I believe, 10, 15 minutes, uh, they tested the person again. And everything which was blue basically became green. Again, the skin, the bladder, the kidney, allergy, anything which became was blue before became green. So that's a health condition. And they're proving this all over the place. And once they proved it, uh, they write the report. They give me all the copies of the testing, which is more than what you just see. I just give you an extract. Here's a comparison for and after. On the left side, the blue you see before, the organs and body functions. And on the right side, after consuming the water, how the condition of that person changed. No, I'm not making claims. Visa Institute just tells me that's what they test and what's what their findings are. And once the tests are over, I get these many pages of testings, which are on the website, and I get a certificate for every product. Every right. product, they were tested, I get a certificate. And so I had my product tested, both water products and the certifications there. So these things give me a peace of mind because I know I'm on the right track and they can prove it. And yes, you talked about quantum physics. These things you can only do on the level of quantum physics, not regular method will work. And the planet is based on quantum physics, whether we know it or not. And you talked about the time. You see, when I give people tests on their body, I say in no time. If I say no time, people freak out. Right. <laughs> but if, if I say I do it in one second, they say, oh, that's fast. And I build them a bridge because one second they can think with, you know, they can imagine, okay, one second, that's fast. So I say, take this product on your body, and in one second, your body changes. And they say, that's incredible fast, yeah. When I say, in no time it changes, then they freak out, and they cannot follow. So I leave it alone, I say, in one second. It gives them a peace of mind. It All makes this perfect sense. It really, it, it really does. That's, that's, um, that kind of tickles me a little bit. If you say one second, they can wrap their heads around that. But if you say in no time, meaning instantaneously, they can't. They can't handle it. That's that's interesting. You know, um, you know, I have my cell phone unit. I think that's fascinating and worth repeating. That, and we've mentioned this before, folks, on a on a previous conversation between uh, Caravan Central and uh, Norbert Heuser, and that is with this harmonizing device on his mobile phone. We have them on ours as well. Not only is your own phone the frequency harmonized where it's no longer harmful, but when it goes through the towers, when you place the call and it goes through the towers, you're going to call somebody in South Africa, one of my favorite places on earth, frankly, for a number of reasons. It goes through the towers, up to the satellite, and down to the recipient of the call. He could be in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It doesn't matter. But the incoming frequency that the recipient of the call is experiencing, it's harmonized as well. So during the course of that call, any effects of electromagnetic radiation are, shall we say, mitigated in some way on the quantum level. And I put it that way simply because we don't want to give any of these mugs who do not want their fellow human beings to have access to this kind of I'm going to call it tech, simply because technology is the study of, ology is the study of something, biology, I mean, whatever, geology is the study of. The technical study is technology, and the benefits of it, or the result of it, whatever you decide to label it. 
It's the same for the recipient as for the actual caller. Even though the recipient does not have an IPC device on it or near it. If that's, if that's not quantum, well, then I don't know what quantum is at all. And I think I do. I mean, Norbert, that, that's amazing. And I'm sorry, I just had to repeat it. I, I'm pretty sure well, everybody well, got it, and I still needed to repeat it. <laughs> well, your English is better than mine. I'm happy if you present it so that the American fellow man can truly understand it. It goes even further. Um, when the guy in South Africa on his unprotected cell phone calls me, in the moment I'll pick up, he is covered again. And this in no time. The moment I pick up, there's no latency between me in Florida and the guy in South Africa. There is no latency. Not one second. It's no time. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, I could put my technology, when, when I developed the technology and had my first product, people say you become filthy rich now because, um, Apple puts in all their cell phones, and all the cell phones are safe, right? I said, no, 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 they will do crap. They would admit that they're not safe now. They will never do that. Right. And, uh, if I put my technology in every cell tower in the world, no Wi-Fi and no cell phone and no nothing would have any negative health impact. Now, you realize many people will claim this is a wild boast. However, that's okay. That's okay. The, 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 the BISA Institute has determined that this is correct. Yes. We won't yeah. even use the word true. We'll say correct rather than yeah. true because yeah. I'm sensing a legal ramification to using the word true. Okay. Thank you. So the, um, the same test I just showed you about the water, the BISA Institute did this with my cell phone and the home protection for electromagnetic radiation. And they came up with these testings and the same graphs and testing the human body and the functions and so on and so forth. I don't go there now. We may do another show. The human protect you wearing and I'm wearing. I can give you a story what Visa Institute tested with a person who has been vaccinated. Maybe I mentioned it. A person, 80 year old man, very sick, had been vaccinated. And they tested the person and they found spike proteins and all these goodies in the body of that person graphene oxide and they tested the person and I have that test and then they put my SD1, this round little disc on the person and tested him two minutes later again and everything which has been degenerative with this person was gone and they say we the technology nullifies the harmful effect of spike proteins and of graphene oxide so <laughs> they say that not me. Well, here's mine, and it's around my neck continuously. I sleep with it. I even get—I don't want to get too personal here, but I even get in the shower with it. Yeah, that's. I fine. don't take it off ever. I, I personally take it off at nighttime. Put it next to my pillow, where it covers me. Right. Not All right. Me. So that builds now the bridge beautifully to the next theme. Now we're getting—I promise you—deeper and deeper into tricky stuff about water. Right. And the next right. subject there, which links completely well with what we just said, is water and frequencies. Okay? Water and frequencies. Now, this is going to get, I, I, I beef it up, the gradient is going to get more tough now, okay? For people perhaps to follow. I'm trying to make it followable. Talking about water, one must understand first the basics of frequencies. The entire world is based on frequencies only. Usually I have an entire seminar with the subject, um, maybe we do another show only on frequencies. So I'll give you here a crash, intense information about frequency. Every food, every product has its own frequency. Every cell in our body, every single cell has its own frequency. Every human being has its own frequency. This is why distant healing is possible. And uh, this is why telepathy is possible. Yes. When I give seminars, I do a telepathy test on a person so that the people, the person himself and the people in the seminar room can witness telepathy. Now, it's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, but I don't care. I've done it. 
and I keep doing it. So it gets real to people that uh, telepathy exists. And if you practice, you can use it. So for me, the biggest wonder of this world is maybe the biggest one. When we are created, there was only one cell. Then the cell broke up in 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Right? This is simple biology physics. We know that. Now my question to you is, how does the cell number 23,450 know it will be the right eye and the cell number 280,475 will know it will be the left ear? Well, in my opinion, the short answer is because it is programmed to do so. It was created to do this. Exactly. But through frequency. Yes. Okay. It only works through frequency. Like every human has his unique fingerprint. We know that. It's unique, right? Every person. Eight billion people have different thing, uh, fingerprints. Each human has a different frequency. So this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, what is important to understand is that regardless how many different frequencies there are on the planet, three billions, three billions, it, we cannot even put it in a non mathematical number. <clears throat> there are only two type of frequencies. You can separate all frequencies of the world in only two types. One type is pro-survival, positive, and one type is counter-survival, negative. So when I was younger, I uh, helped people by testing them on food allergies, which food are for them pro-survival they should eat, and which food is counter-survival they should not eat. Everything in this world is pro-survival or counter-survival. That doesn't only count for food, that counts for a relationship. The relationship with your wife is pro-survival or counter-survival. The job you're doing is pro-survival or counter-survival. John, your job is pro-survival. This is why I work with you. Because you help people to understand the world better and find solutions. And answers and questions which usually come, don't come up on CNN. You have this organization called uh, uh, Doctors... Uh, what is it called? Doctors... Um, not for the third world. There's a, there's, a, there's a group of doctors. They travel the world and every year they give their vacation and go to a place and help free charge people in poor countries. Uh, there's a yeah, name the, doc name. the Doctors Without Borders, I think you might be. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. This is a pro survival activity. So they're pro survival. Somebody who sells drugs, it's a counter survival activity. And you see so many relationships where they're really uh, nice to each other and supportive and others who are permanently fighting and ending up in court and killing each other. So everything in this world has a frequency and every frequency is either pro-survival or counter-survival. So what you do, pro-survival frequency, you support, 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 support. Counter-survival frequency, you try to change them into pro-survival. So if you're in a company and you have your Monday morning meetings with the staff, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get these people together in one direction again, which are fighting within the company against each other, and you try to bring them on a track of pro-survival. So you support pro-survival and you try to change counter-survival. If you can't change counter-survival, you have to cut it off, you have to separate. If you work with your wife and uh, you try to make your marriage go right, if you keep trying, 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 and it doesn't work, you may have to separate. So it counts for many, many different way, walks of life. Everything is counter-survival or pro-survival. When I go with my wife to places and things happening, I just look at her, counter or pro? She says counter. I said, like, let's go. Let's leave. Okay. Um, so these are delivered in my seminars typically, but now about frequencies. Everything in this world has frequencies. And as our good friend Nikola Tesla said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. He says if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And you know what he was talking about. So my technology is based on frequencies. And the future of survival 
in medicine, in life, in the improvement of all conditions of this planet, is determined by how we handle frequencies. For a lot of people, this goes over the head. So I got to talk to the guy, and they're going to know it's about a frequency. Is that guy on the frequency you need him to be? He has to be to solve the problem. Does he see the big picture? The future of this planet and all beings depend on our understanding and application of the above. And uh, my countryman, um, Schumann, Otto Schumann, he discovered that there's a frequency on this planet, he called it alpha wave, 7, 8.3 hertz. And the human being needs 7, 8.3 hertz to survive, to live. He was a very modest man. He called it alpha wave, not Schumann wave. Alpha wave. If it would have been me, I would have called it Norbert wave, of course, right? Ah, something important. Put my name on it. Now he said alpha wave. So the human being cannot exist without the 7, 8.3 hertz. And I know the British BBC um, did a, a test many years ago. You know, these super rich people think when uh, things coming down, we just go in a bunker and we survive in the bunker for some months and then we come back again when everything up there is kind of clean, right? And the BBC uh, took students in a bunker for a few weeks and they all became sick because they didn't have the 7, 8.3 frequency in the bunker. I believe, I cannot prove that, I believe that when uh, people fly in, a, in the cosmos, that in these rockets, they may have a creator of frequency 7, 8.3 on their machines. But I just speculate. Okay, is now, that seven? Is that seven point eight three or seven eight point three? Seven point eight three. Let me ask you this: uh, Is that gigahertz or what? What? What cycle rate is that frequency? No, Do you know? Hertz. Hertz. It's hertz, very okay. low, very low cycle. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Low cycle. Now, um, now my countryman found this out, and um, the uh, Mr. Schumann. And the uh, interesting thing is that Heinz Berger, another German engineer, of course, you got to be German. Okay, you got to be German. Uh, <laughs> he discovered that the brain works on the exact same frequency. The brain works on the exact same frequency, 7.8.3. 7.83, sorry, 7.83. Now, to give an example of frequencies, I took a violin and a cello. Right, and uh, I'm going to play for you now a video where you hear the different sound of the violin and cello. If you look at what they look like, they look very extreme similar, different in size. But what does differentiate them? The sound. And what is the sound? The sounds are purely frequency. A good audio engineer can tell by the scope on his computer when he sees the frequency of an instrument, he can tell you pretty much which instrument it is because every music instrument has typically frequencies and typically patterns. So let's listen to the sound here. And the difference is the frequency. So talking about water and frequencies, what do I do with my technology? If you understand the principle of frequency now, um, the water and frequency. Most municipal water throughout the US are bad. Depending on the location, they have lots of yummy ingredients in your water. Fluoride, chloramine, chlorine, arsenic, as we pointed out before. So with my technology, I work on the frequency. Now, this is important for you to follow. Every one of these beautiful ingredients, let's take fluoride. Fluoride has a frequency. The fluoride frequency is different than chloramine or chlorine or arsenic. They're all particles in the water, but every one of these particles has a typical different frequency. So with my technology, I work on frequency. 
I identify that particular frequency and I nullify that frequency. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean by nullify. Mathematically, let's say that frequency of fluoride is plus two. I'm, I'm very simplifying. Plus two. If I now give a minus two, the result is nil. That's pure math, right? Plus right. two minus two is nil. So I took that frequency of plus two, gave it the frequency of minus two, and the result is nil. That's very simple. Uh, John, have you heard about or used um, noise cancellation headphones? Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and uh, also I'm familiar with um, within the mixing process of um, a piece of music, for example, it is possible for certain frequencies to cancel each other out and you hear neither of those frequencies yeah. within the musical recording. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm with you. So if you take two speakers, for example, I work a lot with audio and music. And if you put these speakers in a certain angle towards each other, normally a, steep, a pair of speakers, you have like left and right in front of you, right? Stereo. Yeah. So if you put them in a certain angle uh, against each other, their frequency nullify each other and you hear nothing. Okay. So that's a typical situation. And we call this in the physical world um, inversion. And an inversion, technically, what I showed you, the plus minus two is simplified. Okay. Here is a proper inversion. For people who are more into physics, that's a probably inversion. So the red and the green waves are canceling each other. Same frequency, but they have different waves and they cancel each other. So what right. I do in my technology, I take the frequency of, for example, go back again to um, arson, uh, to we had fluoride, fluoride, right? So I analyze the fluoride frequency, um, and then I nullify it in my technology, um, which is called inversion. So in this product, this is a quantum physics computer, a quantum physics computer, which has no keyboard and no um, monitor, if you think conventional computers. It's a quantum physics computer programmed, guaranteed for 10 years. So if the water now, to make it simple with one product, if the water flows through the pipe on which it sits, it recognizes the negative frequency of fluoride, and the moment it passes, in no time, it nullifies it. Just one example. Same counts for arsenic, same counts for whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever's in the water, we nullify it. And the moment it passes the product in no time. Okay, so what happens now, the fluoride particle is still in the water. What is dangerous, the fluoride particle or the frequency? The frequency. Exactly. The frequency is dangerous. The frequency is harmful, not the, the physical particle. Okay, here's another yeah. example of how I explain that. Um, you see here uh, examples of frequency. I've made it red, blue, and green and said it's good, bad, and good, right? Just, you know, okay. to simplify it, okay? So you see in the left uh, image, you see a full spectrum of that water, including that bad frequency. Let's take that one bad frequency, which is uh, fluoride, okay? Then you see on the right side, when it now passes the water, you see the red, basically you don't see it anymore. I made it very light to give you the idea it's there, but it has no more impact. It has no more power, right? The red and the, the uh, blue and the green ones, which are good frequencies, we don't touch. So if in the water is vitamin C, true vitamin C, we leave it. If it's a good mineral, we leave it. But if it's a counter survival frequency like fluoride, we nullify it. So it has no more impact. This is why you saw before with the Biza Institute, those before and after pictures. Okay, let's look at this again real quick. The before and after picture. On the left, the blue, where everything is blue degenerative. The body is in trouble, is unhealthy. Now he uses our water, which has been modified, improved with our water unit. And everything which has been negative is now turned into positive. There's no more, what Pisa says, there's no more reaction to the body to the negative right 
Okay, good. You know, it, 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 and it spawns some other thoughts as well. The, the real key here is what Tesla says. Everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. And it applies to everything. And I'm, I'm going to wax a little bit rudimentary here, but people have said, I don't know about this person or that person. I just get, I just get va- bad vibrations from them. Or sure. this person seems like a, a good spirit, people will say. They, I just, they just put off, they're just their presence seems to improve the atmosphere because yeah. human beings put off different frequencies too. And, and I'm thinking, I mean, I'm going all the way to when you are in prayer, ladies and gentlemen, which is why when people are in agreement, they really are. They're not just saying they're in agreement. They are in agreement. The difference between is it is it real or is it fake? Oh, I'm in agreement. No, you're not. Right? Well, let me see if I can change my way of thinking. Let me change my frequency. This is why it is written in that ancient scripture that when people are in agreement, what they're in agreement regarding will come to pass. They will become little uh, micro creators. Everything is either pro-survival or counter-survival. Light and dark, good and evil, life and death. I think this is amazing, Norbert. Actually, I didn't, uh, I had no no idea. Well, actually, I did, but not this great of an idea that it would lead to, effectively, the way we view life and what is good and what is bad. Something that is, well, it's expedient. Yes, but it's bad in the long term. Well, but it's still expedient. And the plus side is we can make money. Wait a minute. And this is really, in most simplistic terms, the state of civilization practically everywhere you look, except in certain parts of the world, uh, of which we generally know nothing about. So anyway, over to you. That's my little, that's my philosophical rant for the moment. You're right. And you know, we have an expression uh, we are on the same wavelength. You say yes. that, right? Oh, yes. We're on the same wavelength, okay? So That's true. Yeah. So, and, and you uh, you sometimes may come to a, in a, in a house uh, to people and you feel uncomfortable and you say, oh, I could live here. Let me get out of here. Or you feel, this is so fantastic. I feel like home, right? These are, these are all based on frequencies, not on visual effects or whatever, you know? So the water has all these contaminants, chlorine, fluorine, chlorine, arsenic, whatever it is. And our job, my job, is to nullify all these products that they have no physical effect on the body or the food or the water anymore. They are still there as physical particles, but they're neutral. They don't do nothing to nobody. Now, in many communities, the water is recycled. It has been treated in sewage treatment plants, right? And then they're going to give it back to you, right? And the water right. looks clean. It looks nice. Looks cool, right? And we <laughs> drink that water four or five times over, okay? Yeah. Um, that means that water has been consumed previously by people, by your neighbor. They drank it. They peed and pooped it out. Now, they cleaned their dishes, their laundry. They consume headache pills and all sorts of medication, tranquilizers. And all these particles end up in water. It cannot be any other way. You know, it ends up in water. Now, the problem is not, again, that these particles end up in water, but the frequency. And the sewage treatment plant in your city cannot clean those frequencies. They may tr- clean some particles or even all, but these particles left their track behind the frequencies. As you will see in the next paragraph, not only frequencies but information so water stores information we'll talk about this in a moment so and these information frequencies are still in the water so the water may look clean but it's not it has full of negative counter survival information they cannot filter it out so i recorded a test which i'll show you later uh how that works now which brings us then to the next point, um, water and hexagonal structure. There was a gentleman 
called Mazuro Emoto, Dr. Mazuro Emoto. I oh, yes. never met him. He died before, and he died at the time I started to work with water. Uh, but he left his um, fingerprints and footprints all over the place. Now, he was, uh, he's Japanese, he was Japanese, and a very Christian person. You talked about prayer some minute ago. We'll come back to that very soon. And uh, there are not so many Christian people found in uh, Asia or Japan, uh, but he was a very Christian person. And I'm sure we would have enjoyed each other's company if we would have met. And I looked into his findings and took them as an inspiration, as a benchmark, and to incorporate them into my technology and my products. He found two things. He found that water stores information and transmits information. It passes on information. And he found that healthy water has a structure. And this structure is called hexagonal structure. From the Greek language, it means six, six corners, pentagon, hexagonal. So when we were younger, I remember in wintertime at the window panes, when it was cold and frosty, there were these ice crystals on the water, on, on, the, on the windows, right? These ice crystals. And these ice crystals were hexagonal structured. So, and Mazura Moto developed the technology that he would take water, freeze it, take a crystal from the water and photograph it. And he would photograph it and see what the water structure is. And from the water structure, he could tell that the water was healthy or not healthy. And here is what it looks like if it's healthy. Beautiful. Next to spring water. And this ice crystal, this water crystal, looks to me like a piece of art. Does like, it? Like jewelry. I mean... How much more beautiful can jewelry be? It is beautiful. That is okay. the word. So, and uh, this is what is called hexagonal structure. You see like one, two, three, four, five, six, so to speak, stars coming out from the structure, right? Yes. And, and water does not look always the exact same. It looks uh, different all the time, but it has that beautiful structure. So he says, look, this water is healthy water. It's called as well fine clustered. This water can penetrate your cells. This is how water has to be. And our pristine water we originally had on this planet always had this hexagonal structure. Till the moment we started to destroy the planet and uh, a lot of ingredients. Okay, then he gave some samples, examples. He took water and spoke the word love and gratitude. He took the same word and spoke the word Satan. The water was enforced, improved, or destroyed. He did a lot of experiments. He played Mozart music or heavy metal. I put the Mozart heavy metal, but I could have left it off. He would have known which one is Mozart and which one is heavy metal. He took uh, a river flow in Japan, the Shinano River. On the left side, you see the spring when it um, came out. Oh my gosh. In the, Folks, here's the thing. Folks, this is real. This is real. This isn't some some crazy f fantasy. This is real. So soak it up, okay? So in the spring, you see the beautiful structure. On the top right, you see midst of the river towards the ocean, already pretty destroyed. And when it finally reaches the ocean, it's completely destroyed. Here is an example of the city water of London and Paris. No hexagonal structure by far. Now here we come to a, an interesting topic. Many of you may know that there is a place in France called Lourdes. They call it a holy place in the Catholic Church. And there's a well, the holy well. And this is the water structure of the holy well in Lord France. Now, I raised the provocative question, what happens if we let nobody pray at this well for, let's say, a week or a month? Is the water still has by nature this structure? Or is that the structure because people all the time, every day, by the hundreds and thousands, pray at this well? 
because Mazur Emoto wrote two booklets, which I point out in a minute, which you should read. Very easy to read with a lot of pictures, which I took from there. And, um, and, he, and he talked about changing the quality of water by praying. And he gave examples. And here's an example on the other card. You have healthy water on the left. And then when you use a cell phone, the cell phone destroys the water outside your body and inside your body. And on the right side, you see the same thing with the microwave oven. Water before putting the microwave, after taking it out of the microwave, which is a clear proof that electromagnetic radiation destroys the water, both inside of you and outside of you. Wow. So besides this, what we call hexagonal structure, he discovered that water takes over information and water distributes information throughout the body, through the cells. Everything in the body coordinates, communicates with and through water. So this is why water has to be extremely healthy and clean. For the water to do, they have the hexagonal structure is essential and to do what water should be doing and what it did for millions of years with the bodies of the people. For millions of years, we had pristine water, which had by nature, this hexagonal healthy structure by nature. We didn't do anything to it. We just did to it and we destroyed it. With the structure of the water, you can embellish somebody's life or you can destroy it. Our water we have nowadays, publicly, and most bottled water, is counter survival. Full stop. The illusion I drink water, I drink healthy water, is an illusion, a complete betrayal, a complete lie. So bad words, bad thoughts can questionable music, bad intentions can destroy the water structure. Electromagnetic radiation, Wi-Fi, cell phone, microwave oven can destroy um, the structure of water. Right? So here I have now a video which I would like to bring to you. Um, about water and information. How water picks up information, even written information, even written information upside down. Water picks up written information. Written information can destroy or heal water. Please watch that video. Now let's see what we can do with the water according to Dr. Mazuro Emoto. I take this piece of paper here and I hold it onto the water and we'll try test him again. That's my pressure. Weak. The water, which was just a second ago good, by adding that paper, the water becomes bad. And this is according to Mazuro Moto, who I studied and uh, I talked to it about some other time. But now this shows you how water can take information mm -hmm. and pass information. So the water became back by just putting the paper to the water. Oh. And the water cannot read, right? Water mm -hmm. cannot read. It cannot read. No, it cannot read upside down, right? Okay, can you sp speak out loud what's on the paper? Devil. Devil, okay. Just the word devil brought the water down and spoiled the water. Okay, so the water is bad. Now we'll take another piece of paper and uh, we hold it to the water and we see whether it changes the water. Match my pressure. Strong. 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 Yes. Huh. What did it say? <laughs> Norbert. 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 <laughs> All right. So I changed the quality of the water again from bad to good. So the water is good. Now, if that doesn't make it for you, <laughs> water is extremely sensitive. Um, I show you these information and videos and pictures. Um, you can believe me or not. It's okay. You don't need to believe me. Other people came up with this as well. Oh, now, I'm all in. I, I'm in. <laughs> Don't worry okay. about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I made a step ahead then. Um, Mazuri Moto died, and I had my water products, right? And I had my water products tested by the Visa Institute, as we talked about, and I showed the proofs. But now, it was tempting for me. Imagine my mindset. I wanted to test my products under Mazuri Moto standards of hexagonal structure. 
The Diesel Institute cannot test the hexagonal structure, they can test the consequence of the water. So there are like, I believe two or so, Mazuno and Moto labs in this world, which work uh, under his license. So I went to one of the Mazuno and Moto labs and said, hey guys, I would like to have my water products tested by these. Here are the two water products. And they said, okay, we'll test them and we'll take um, reverse osmosis water. I said, no, 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 <laughs> don't take reverse osmosis water. Take regular water people have from the water tap. They said, no, we take reverse osmosis water because reverse osmosis water is the poorest water we know. And if you change that poor water into good water, if you rehabilitate that water, then you do magic. So, fine, let's look at this image here. I gave them my product, this pen, what you call a pen. You see on the left side the photo they made from the reverse osmosis water, spoiled and unhealthy, totally destroyed. The water structure is totally destroyed. We we'll talk later about the reverse osmosis water. Then they used my pen, W100, and then you see on the right side, the same water after my technology has been applied. I realize that there are some people who are not going to be able to receive this, but I urge you to look deeply into this. This is not a dodge or a scam or a joke or anything of the sort. This is the actual science. I mean, these I did not are the results. I did, not I did not execute the test. I gave my products to the institute, to the lab, and said, make the test. Give me back the results, right? So yeah. that was the result with the pen, the W100. And then I did a second test run with the blue unit, which I showed you before. Again, on the left side, reverse osmosis water, totally killed, spoiled. On the right side, the result, when the water, when the water, when this blue unit was sitting on the water pipe and they used the water coming out of the tap and tested them uh, after they froze the water. <laughs> Fantastic. Really? It really is. Look, folks, I've been using this, these products for, for quite some time. But it's it's one thing if you're using the products and go, yes, I, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying these quite a lot. And it's another thing when you see visual evidence of why you're enjoying these products. It's beyond cool. It's all the way to... It's all the way to wonderful. It really is. Sorry, this, this is amazing. Thank you, John. Thank you. So I, I must say, uh, without any doubt, I was very proud when I saw these results. I knew I did the right thing, but then for me to see it, you know, it's like maybe some people who get the Grammy Award or, or an Oscar for what they have done, right? I mean, it's the highest, usually, usually, the highest level of uh, acknowledgement. So um, I enjoyed it. I was very proud, very happy. And again, the literature is there. Now, here is a test I have done with my grandson. I took the silver pen, uh, I took the silver pen and I took uh, water from the city and I treated this water. And then you see the results before and after. So we're going to test with Jaden first whether he's testable. Give me your arm. Say yes. Yes. And are you strong or weak? Strong. Okay. Say no. No. Weak. Okay, good. So he's testable. And uh, we check now the water quality, which I brought here from the city water, and we see uh, how he reacts on this. If he's strong, the water is a good quality. If he becomes weak, the water is a bad quality. Match my pressure. Okay, good. Weak. Weak. So the water is bad was no surprise as the city water, like in most other places in the world, it's always the same. So I'll take my W100 and just hold it to the container of that uh, paper back here for a second, and now we test him again. <clears throat> Match my pressure, a bit more. Okay, good. Strong. Strong. Okay, good. So I changed the quality of the water in a split second. The water is good now. Okay. I think uh, that should impress you. 
uh, it impresses me every time I do it. And my grandson, he and my grandson, the boy taller than me, is 11 years old, and uh, he is into muscle testing and my technology. And when I give sometimes demonstrations, he wants to be the guinea pig. He wants to test it. And he, I ask him to test people. He just loves it. I don't know whether he will follow my footsteps or not. I don't know, but he just loves it. Now, I don't sell books, but on my website, there is a button called books. And I put books from all walks of life, which I find interesting uh, to read. And um, here on my website, you see those two books from Mazuro Emoto, in which you find a lot of what I just said, the confirmations and proofs and photos and some write-ups from him. The books are not huge, not uh, huge books to read. There are more booklets, uh, not expensive, and I highly recommend to you to read those two books. And then there are two other books, as we speak about books, I would like to point out. There are many books about water, there's no question. Many, many books about water. and But these are, again, two... Uh, highlights of books which I can highly recommend for you to read. All right. So when water, basically what I do is I'll take water, basically no matter what condition, and the documentation I have clearly proves that my technology rehabilitates the water and reinstates the so much needed hexagonal structure. Without hexagonal structure, the water is not healthy. Water used to have the textual structure in nature, in pristine water. And if you happen to find a real healthy natural spring, which is not contaminated, this water has the hexagonal structure. Hexagonal structure is one of the key features. And um, this hexagonal structure can be measured, the size of the cluster, of the molecules can be measured by what's called nuclear magnetic resonance technology. You can measure in a laboratory these values. The smaller the cluster, the lower these values. Uh, one can take the absorption rate of hexagonal water for oneself. What happened to me when I first heard about you got to drink this and this amount of water per day, right? Like we all heard. And you drink it, most of us, like, like one gallon, for example, after half a gallon or a third of a gallon, I'm fed up to drink water. I can't see it anymore. I don't want to drink it. Uh, I feel I have to force myself. And later on, I learned why. Because the water would not penetrate the cells where it's supposed to go. It would be sitting in my belly and would make me bloated. And I felt uncomfortable. Now, if you ever have my products and you drink two, three glasses in one gulp, of my water. You feel not bloated for one second. Why? Because the body means the cells immediately pick up the water and let penetrate the cell membranes into the cells. And that is what water is supposed to do. Which brings me to the next topic, John, if you're ready for it, which is called water and hydration. Hydration versus dehydration. You hear a lot about this nowadays. And a lot of companies say, here's my bottle of water, hydration water. That's my personal opinion. My personal opinion, it's all BS. If the water doesn't have hexagonal structure, it will not penetrate cells. And then you are hydrated. That's my personal opinion. Um, there are different companies who have different technologies to hydrate water. Different companies different ways to go about it. I have my way to go about it. It doesn't mean that everybody else there, out there is uh, BS. No, not at all. There are always good people in this world with good intentions and good products. And I'm happy they're there. And I, as I said before, I don't know competition. If I find somebody who does something great, I say, beautiful, you did a great job. The market is big enough for you and me. There are millions of people waiting for our products. So let's shake hands and see how we can educate the people together to educate the people what they have to know so my way of dehydration is a different way or it's a very unique way and uh, you see very often the doctor says to you oh you're dehydrated you got to drink water more water this is a standard stupid statement a complete sentence stupid 
said by somebody who doesn't understand water. If the doctor would say, you've got to drink more healthy water, I would say, great, and that guy knows yeah. what to talk about. Yeah, that makes a little more sense, doesn't it? Not just any water. And it's my understanding, Norbert, that the water that we have on this planet is all the water we're ever going to have. No new water is being made. Now, I don't know this. This is just what I've come to understand, which means that any water that we drink, there's a good chance it's been strained through some brontosaurus's uh, kidneys a couple of times before it came out of our tap. I mean, is that... Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, there's one small little exception, um, to my opinion. Again, I don't know everything. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Me there's, either. There's much more I have to learn than I know. And I know at my dying day, uh, I still didn't learn all I wanted to learn. I'm still looking. I'm still researching. I'm still, I'm so interested in what's going on, right? And nowadays, my presentation to you today is, again, maybe twice as good as the one for eight weeks, 12 weeks ago, right? So there's one exception, perhaps, to what you said. Basically, yes, that's what it is. Of course, they're trying to turn salt water into usable water, which is a way they have to go uh, to do at least this converted water, to use it for some areas of life. Maybe not so much for the drinking water, but other water reasons, okay? That we flush the toilet with, let me call it, what they call class A water is nonsense, where we could flush the toilet with, I give an example, with salt water, you know, converted salt whatever. So salt water, they have to do something about it. But again, again, it doesn't matter. Yes, I agree with you, but there's one perhaps small exception. The mitochondria produce in your body, body water as well. Okay. This is not the big volume of water out there, but for your body's functions, the mitochondria do that. Now, John, if somebody is dehydrated, what do you think a regular person is dehydrated Right now, how much water does the person have to drink to be hydrated? What do you think? You know, Norbert, other than speaking with you about these things, uh, I have always been given to understand that, for example, my my personal doctor says, person six feet two, about 185, 190 pounds, if I've been binging on you know stuff I shouldn't eat, one and a half liters per day. I've also heard 10 eight-ounce glasses of water per day but those are the only guidelines i've ever heard and other than the comment from my doctor which is about the same thing as i've always heard it seems to be the same answer out of the textbook that i was reading when i was in elementary school so the answer is i have only what i've been told to go by so um basically we're talking about two to three liters of water per day right this under normal condition not working in the desert and not in the coal mines two, three liter waters a day, which is like two third of a gallon or so. Um, yes, but now if somebody's actually at the very moment dehydrated, what do you think how much water, if you say three liters a day, how much water does he have to drink right now to be hydrated again? What do you think? I've always been told that if you encounter a person who is what you'd call observably dehydrated, then you begin giving them water slowly to allow the absorption to occur. So the answer is, I don't know. I only okay. know what I've heard, but I don't know. I understand. Um, now, would you, could you imagine that I could hydrate somebody with one drop of water? That would be a little bit of a stretch, but, but knowing you as I do, it would not surprise me to learn that this was the case. I'll, I'll put it that way. And I'm not taking the safe way out. I mean, that's my honest answer. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you for the compliment. Yes, let's do one thing. I have here a video. I have here a video, uh, which I shot again with my grandson, uh, the dehydration test, okay? I'll test my grandson, and he's dehydrated, and I timed it that day that he would be dehydrated at the moment we shoot the video, because he drinks our water at home, so he's never dehydrated. So I timed it knowing that in the test he's dehydrated, and then you see how I treat the water with my technology. And then I put one drop of water on his lips. And this one drop of water hydrates him. Let's watch. Now let's see whether he is dehydrated or not, okay? There's a dehydration point. There are several dehydration ways to test a person. We test the one that I usually do. You're strong. Now we check whether you are dehydrated. If you become weak, 
you are dehydrated. If you're strong, you're hydrated, okay? Dehydrated. Dehydrated, yes, exactly. My lips are dry. So he's dehydrated. Now, normally people would say, oh, I have to drink now half a gallon of water, a liter, two liters to be hydrated again. Now I show you what we can do. If you put your finger, dip your finger in the water, and then take that bit of water and put it on your lips. All right, that's oh. all we do. That's all we do. Now we test again. Now if you're strong, then you're what? Hydrated. And if you're weak? You're dehydrated. Okay, good. So let's check. Hydrated. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, which means with one drop of water, I hydrated him. Okay? And I explained to you then how that happens and what I do and why this works, right? But just a quick test, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. So what do you say now? Astounding. Truly. Okay. But why? So what, what happens here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I said, let's bring this in, put this together, the puzzle. The world is based on frequencies. Water works on frequencies. Water communicates with each other throughout the body. We talk about quantum physics. It comes all together here at this very moment. So when I give now his body on the lips, one drop of water, his one drop of water in quantum physics communicates with all water molecules throughout his body and converts the dead water into healthy hexagonal structured water in less than a second in no time. This one drop of water had valid information for the body, important information for all the water molecules. They exchanged information. They gave, passed on the information to the all water molecules, which so far were not used by the cells. Let me give you a picture. All this water, before the drop of water I gave him, was sitting in his body and in front of the cells, like trying to get into the door. And the cells would not open the door. The cells are high classy computers. They would not open the door and says, no, 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 we can't use you. In the moment I put the one drop on his lips, in quantum physics, that one drop of water communicated with all water in his body and turned them into pristine, healthy water. And now the cell said, oh, great, come in. And all oh, that water sitting there entered the cells, and now the test result was he's hydrated. I see, because, because obviously there is um, hydration available. Otherwise, the, the any human body, including your grandson, would just be a, a, a dried husk. So, and, and obviously that's not the case. So this one communicates through its unique frequency to, the, to all of the other water molecules within the body and activates them and directs them to go into the cells. I mean, is that correct? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, it's about time that we learn things like this. After all, it is that we're pretty deeply into the 21st century, and this archaic way of thinking has to go by the wayside because obviously the condition of health of the human beings across the globe altogether is not that great. It is not what we expected with the advent of the 21st century. It, it just isn't. So it's time. Or not, as you say, what is it? You you don't say rethink. Yes, I, I created the word rethink. You know. So if we think modified, uh, we take information from the past and we mix it, and we still get a, a weak, uh, wrong thinking. You have if if we would if we would end up tomorrow on a lonely island, twenty of us, and we say we want to start a new society, let's take a flip chart and write down what are the components of a healthy society, right? You would start from scratch. You would not say, well, we used to do this and this. Forget what we used to do. We're not interested in that. What are the key elements of a healthy society? And we would pin them down and say, this is our target. Not using bad, wrong, half-hearted information from the past. So now, 
Before I talked about cells, you remember I talked about cells, the job of cells. The cells have to produce energy with the water and the nutrition and the minerals and the vitamins and so on and to create uh, energy. Now the water is there to help to create that energy. Now the water is there to flush out the toxins from the cells. Now, so with this test, with this one drop, I show you that the volume of water is not important for hydration. The quality is important. Then comes in the volume, because now you've got to like a uh, merry-go-round, recycle, recycle the cells with fresh water, uh, use water, the toxic goes out, bring in new fresh water and so on. Now the volume is important of, let's say, three liters a day, right? Make sense? Yeah. And people take it the wrong way around. They think that volume is important for hydration. The amount of water is secondary. As long as the quality is not right, it has no effect. Okay. I'm making notes. Lots of them. <laughs> okay. Good. The next topic we're going to go into then is water and pH. Very often people talk about pH when they talk about water. Um, and I got to give you a crash course on pH. I have separate seminars where I only talk about pH for an extended amount of time. I give you here an extract from this presentation. Okay, good. Now, pH stands for ponderous hydrogeny, means the weight of hydrogen. Uh, pH gives the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. So the lower the pH number is, the more acidic is the solution. The higher the pH number is, the more alkaline it is. So let's look here at the typical scale. They say seven is neutral, which for me is not neutral. I'll explain to you in a moment why. Um, and um, everything above seven is alkaline. Now, a lot of times people are sold alkaline water. You've got to drink alkaline water, you've got to drink alkaline water. For me, that is not correct. I'll explain in a minute why. <clears throat> People say seven is neutral. For me, 7.34 is neutral. Um, and I rounded up in my presentation to 7.5 to make it easier. Why is 7.34 neutral? Very simple. 7.34, 7.38, people discuss around it. Your body, blood, has a natural pH of 7.34. A natural pH of 7.34. If you would live on a pH level in your body, in your blood, of 8.5 or 6.2, you would be very sick and most likely die. The body needs 7.34. Again, similar to what I discussed earlier on, that's God-given. That's not just a wacky uh, invention by somebody. Uh, the blood needs that. Now, every time we give the body a pH which is above 7.5 or below 7.5, the body has to compensate and bring it back to 7.5. Let's say 7.5 would be on the easy side. So here's the scale. Now, if somebody drinks water which has 7.5, this is neutral, right? Now, you drink water, John, for example, which is 6.5, okay? The 6.5 yes. water you drink, um, is 10 times too acidic. It's what we call a logarithmic scale. From 7.5 neutral to 6.5 is only one number, right? Yes. Yeah, but it's a logarithmic scale, it's 10 times too acidic. Now, if your wife drinks 5.5, it's 100 times too acidic. If somebody drinks 4.5, it's 1,000 times too acidic. 3.5, 10,000 times. Somebody drinks something 2.5, it's 100,000 times too acidic. Impossible for the body to compensate. Now, you would say, who is so stupid to drink 2.5 acidic drink? Well, the answer is simple. Everybody who drinks Coca-Cola. Well, yeah, it'll, it'll clean battery terminals, and it will. I wonder what it does to the human body. Well, it screws you up. <laughs> right? Now, <laughs> on my, I, I made a scale. I made some testing, right, on beverages. I took typical beverages. You may not be able to read this here on the website. Now, this chart I did 
you can download from my website, which I give you later, and you can study it uh, quietly. And I took typical drinks, okay? And I give you in a moment an extract of that. So let's look at this scale here. Maybe on the right side, you can um, read what I said. You see that beer, for example, has 4.4. It's 1,000 times too acidic. Red wine, 3.6, 10,000 times too acidic. Orange juice, 3.5, 10,000 times too acidic, and what have you. So I give you this information for you to be aware how much acidic drinks you give to your body. And I said earlier on, with reasons of cancer, I talk about too acidic. Basically, we are all live too acidic. We all eat too much meat, which is acidic, and the majority of drinks we drink are all acidic. All acidic. If it's not water with 7.5, it's all acidic. Coffee. Coffee, yeah. Very acidic. Yeah, I'll give you an example about coffee. Here it is. The blonde roast is only a thousand times too acidic. The medium roast a thousand times. The cold brew a thousand times. Dark roasted cafe latte and cappuccino and mocha is only a hundred times too acidic. <laughs> wow. I'm oh, laughing okay. because I can laugh or I can cry because, well, <clears throat> I, I like I like coffee. Yeah, I know. I like it less now. Yeah, I know. Thanks, pal. <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, you know, I'm. Um, I have to stick to the truth, whether you like it or not. I gave last week a webinar, which is coming up this week on my website. And if you're interested in, we do the show with you. The, the sure. seminar what is called "What?" Uh, sorry, coffee is the, the widest spread drug in the world. Oh, well, there's no doubt about that. But it tastes good, Norbert. I know. Uh, <laughs> people who take heroin say the same. People who take crack say the same. You know, it's addiction. Right. And I talk about addiction. If you ever want to do that show, I'll be happy to do that show with you. Um, Let's do it. Coffee and addiction, right? So, yeah. so we have here these acidic drinks. And, you know, I said to you, okay, <laughs> I made one more test as I was at Starbucks. Oh, had a mango drink, dragon fruit. Had a refreshing new drink. A yes. cold refreshing drink. That's it. As I was on testing it, it was all this week I did that. Um, I said, okay, let me text, test the dragon fruit, okay? Do you have a drum roll here? One hundred thousand and one million fold to acidic. Uh, at 1.9 pH. Oh, maybe that's why they call it dragon fruit. <laughs> Uh, so I did this research for people to be aware of it, you know, just to be yes. aware of it. You make your own decisions. But in this coffee show, I clearly prove, in quote, that coffee is a drug and people are addicted. Okay? Now, I must say to my self-defense, I'm not trying to be arrogant. But in this lifetime, I repeat, in this lifetime, I have never drunken alcohol coffee, I never smoked, never smoked wheat, hard stuff, I never took drugs in this lifetime. Yeah. And when I prepared the show about coffee is addiction, the first time in my life as an old man, I started to drink coffee to prove to myself the point, which I did, which we can talk about that. So that's pH, water and pH, okay? So the problem is you will we'll talk soon about the consequences, stress. For me, the only reason somebody can become sick, ill, is chronic stress, mentally or physically. That's for me a fact. We can talk about this later. So when we talk about water, we have to talk about pH. And most of the waters we drink are too acidic. To say this up front, for example, all reverse osmosis water is acidic. Okay, so how do I test these things? Uh, if you want to be interested to test it, 
don't take these paper strips, you know, Lacken's paper. They're not accurate. Forget it. They're nonsense, right? Um, I use uh, uh, a product. I don't. I don't sell the product. I use a product, um, which you see it here. Um, it's very accurate, like this guy here. You put one drop of urine, of water, of alcohol, again, one, two drops in here, and within split seconds, you have a digital control which shows you the pH of the product. And this is the only reliable, I mean, there are much more professional ones, but for Joe Blow and me, this is reliable to know what I'm drinking, right? So I did the researches with all these products. All right, good. So water and pH. You must be aware if you have water, what is the pH I'm drinking here? And um, I must add something here on the pH, otherwise I don't feel comfortable. Um, when we talk about pH, I said the body must live on a level of 7.5. There's a natural swing and change throughout the day. And your stomach, if you eat, for example, meat, needs more acidity than uh, in the regular time. And uh, there's one exception, which is uh, your skin. Your skin should be on a level of pH of 5.5. And there are products out there, which I don't sell, uh, which you should use for your skin. Because most of the products we use for our skin are too alkaline. And uh, the shampoos and the wash lotions and whatever, the soaps, they're too alkaline. And your body has a 5.5 pH skin as a natural defense to the outside world. It's like a filter, like a shield. So um, this is why 7.5, yes, if you drink water, if we put water into our body. However, when it comes to cleaning skin, um, it is 5.5. Okay. I got it. Good. Now we come then to the next point to be okay with it, which is water and minerals. Water and minerals. Now here comes a topic which may be stretching it for some people, but you know me, I don't care. I just tell them what I think is true. Right. The pristine water we used to consume on this planet, millions of years, four millions of years, had plenty of those badly needed minerals. Most of the water we're drinking nowadays is absolutely lacking minerals. Such does the soil. I mean, it's depleted. It's, you know, um, we need water with minerals. And um, like in health food store, you cannot buy a pack and throw some minerals in the water and you think you did the job. It has no foundation. The same thing like you, you would eat McDonald's and then go to a health food store and get some vitamins. Um, so I came up with a major approach, which took me a long, long time. And I just published it not long ago. Here's a bit of a chart of typical vitamins and minerals the body needs and uh, the volumes. Um, most people are not aware of the lack of minerals in the body, which causes major health problems. Now, what can we do if our water has not the amount and types of minerals needed? I was fighting with this topic for three years, maybe. First, some thoughts and some ideas and some visions, and then I came up with a solution. I explained to you that my technology I can nullify bad information, right? Yes. I extended my program and I, and with my people, I'm not alone, we researched several healthy, original, pristine springs in Europe. And these natural, really natural springs have minerals. We analyze the water, we analyze the minerals, and we analyze the frequency. So what I do nowadays, which is new, I add, where, where, where I nullify the bad information in the water, I add now the information of minerals. Because again, 
the particles are not important, but the frequency. If you guys out there have truly good minerals in your water, fine, great. Uh, but if they're lacking, we must add them. And how do I add them with my technology? By adding the frequency of these minerals. It's not about the physical particles, as we said. Right, that makes perfect sense. It really does. It's the opposite way. Now I add frequencies which are not there. And uh, that was a major step and a major undertaking. So one thing I did not mention yet in my technology, like this product is guaranteed for 10 years. A year ago, this product had no mineral frequency adding. You know, I develop, I come up with ideas, I come up with new information. Let's say tomorrow they bring a chemical on this market, which has never existed before. Fine. I can analyze this chemical, the frequency, and can add it into my program. This is a computer, a quantum physics computer. So I add it into my program. And I do this without you knowing. It takes me about three days to contact all, to write the program and get up and update all the products around the globe, Remember, regardless where they are. Quantum physics, I'll find you. So then I added the program of minerals. You don't know that. You have the product in use. I don't charge you. Don't pay extra. I just upload it to bring it up to standard, up to the best of my knowledge, up to the best of my technology, up to the best for humankind, what needs to be done. So this programming is endless. Quantum physics knows no time, no space, no left, no right. I just do it. I can contact this product. The same thing happens, by the way, for the cell phone unit. Okay? The cell phone unit now protects against 4G and 5G. Comes tomorrow, for Christ's sake, 6G. I can update your unit in your cell phone, wherever you are in Texas or in Africa. I update it for 6G. This is only possible in quantum physics. Now, people... If people drop out here and say, come on, that's too much. I give you an analogy. You have a computer. You open up the computer and suddenly a message comes from Microsoft. Oh, you have the old version 10.4. Here's the new version 10.5, right? And they offer you the update. How do they know you have the old version? Well, you're connected with them with, through the internet wherever they are, right? right? And it's not a surprise when you say, yeah, update, push the buttons, boop, 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 boop. after one minute, updated, you have the latest version now. People never think about this and say, okay, that's completely fine. But when I say update, they say, how can you do that? Well, a bit more advanced because we work in quantum physics. We don't need the physical connection with the computer with your computer, with your product. We don't need the physical connection. We connect in quantum physics. The frequency has no time, no space. I don't care where you are, how old you are, how old the product is. Within a certain time frame, I update. Full stop. Make sense? It does. Many, many, um, many people will not be able to receive this, but it doesn't mean it isn't correct. All right. I, I try to present it as simplistic as I can so that everybody basically can follow because um, it's a lot of logic, a lot of logic and uh, no ivory tower. All right. So the next stop would be water and red blood cells. Now, a lot of people would say, well, shit, what does that red blood cells to do with water? Well, very much, as you can see. The mission of red blood cells is to transport oxygen to the cells. Yes. In order to do so, the cells must be free floating. The more free they float, the more oxygen they can bind. Let me give you an image here of here it is, how free floating red cells look like. That's what they look like, free floating cells. Okay. 
So the more free floating they are, the more oxygen they can bind. And uh, they work like a magnet and they slightly repel each other like the opposite when you have, have the same polarity going against each other. Right? When, you, when you hold the same polarity against each other, the magnet repel, the metal repels. You know, the red blood cells do the same. And one needs to know that a one healthy red blood cells has about 50 million electrons. 50 million electrons. The electrons are badly needed for our health. Now, when these red, red blood cells are clumped, they can hardly bind any oxygen, or only very little, not enough. This represents an unhealthy situation, which is created by various influences, such as stress, high acidity, toxic overload, and guess what? By bad water. That means, unfortunately, the situation, for most people, that's the case. The red blood cells are clumped. People call these money rolls. So we take a person, as you see here, we take a person and on the left side, you see the image before. The person has clumped red blood cells. Yeah. Then we give the person to drink nine ounces of water, of our water. Then we wait for 15 minutes and then we make a second shot. This is called dark field microscopy. And then we create a second image and the second image shows you how wonderful these red blood cells, which were clumped 15 minutes before, are now free floating. Means they take a lot of oxygen in and send oxygen to the cells. Means a healthy situation. We worked a lot until we had the solution, but we have it now. And this is what it looks like. Good. Now, I was contacted by a person who had a severe illness condition. The person was vaccinated. And again, I don't make that claim. That person sent me the photos before and after. And I said to him, what did you use? He said, well, we have this electromagnetic radiation protection, SD9-50 and um, SD1, which you are wearing, John, and your water unit. And he said, look, this is what the doctors showed to me, and they can't believe, I think it was a frame of 14 days. They said, we can't believe, how did you do that? Yeah. The interesting part is that I offered these doctors a conversation, a meeting, an explanation. Let me they guess, they didn't want to have it. No. <laughs> no. Don't mean to be Mr. Spoiler here, but you know what? I was just in communication with a close friend in the last couple of days, and he said, John, I have four doctors, four of them, and none of them wanted to discuss the effects of this injection. The doctors don't want to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, some of them do. The ones that come on Caravan over the radio program, sure they do. But people out there that aren't in the caravan, so to speak. They don't yeah. get to talk to people like you and so forth. These doctors don't want to hear about it. No, the longer I live, the more I work out there, the less surprised I am. The people who reach out, the doctors who reach out to improve, as I said to you, the 2%, which are fantastic. Uh, you know, They are fantastic for good reasons, because they're looking for answers. Now, the red blood cells, when they are beautifully separated, like I just showed them to you, uh, what does it do for the body? It has a high oxygen uptake. It has an improved oxygen transport to the cells. It reduces the acidity. It increases purification and more energy. And all this only, only, in quote, by drinking healthy water. You don't do anything else. You improve the red blood cells situation through healthy water. From wherever the healthy water comes, doesn't matter. It does that job. So you see those different steps. I'm taking you to uh, what healthy water does and what it can do, which is that the next point, water and redox potential, which people usually have never heard of. I want to get not too much in theory here, but the body needs electrical charge. 
without electrical charge, we cannot live. And the frequencies in our body. Now, you've seen always these videos, these movies, where people are in a hospital, right? Yeah. They're in a hospital, and they have the AKG running, and suddenly it drops to zero. The person is dead, right? Watch here, this video, how it typically looks like. Interpret this for us, Norbert. Yes. So the AKG measures the heart rate, and the heart is stimulated by electricity, right? So yeah. when the person suddenly zero line means dead, there is not enough electrical charge. You 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 seen always when people are um, when they try to bring them back to life and have these extreme electrical shocks yeah. on the body, right? They try to stimulate the electrical waves in the body. We cannot live without electricity. We cannot. We need electricity in our body. People are not aware of that. Um, and if you have a lack of electricity, like in this case, the person just dies. And yeah. things that happened before, of course. Why doesn't he not have electricity? Um, the good water as a natural electrical current, which people don't know. And this electricity is needed for the human body. They don't know good water has a natural electrical current. This is measured is what called redox potential in millivolts. The lower the number of redox potential food or water, the stronger it is. And it's power to bind harmful free radicals. So the body is strengthened and more protected. Good, truly spring water, pristine water, has a redox potential of about plus 150 millivolts and much oxygen. A typical mountain water shows plus 300 millivolts. A typical municipal water is about 500 millivolts, not good at all, which means as well a lack of oxygen in water. My energy water contributes and reduces another 40 millivolt from the redox potential. So in other words, we stimulate, we give an additional benefit. It's a very nice substantial improvement as a side effect for my technology. It's a side effect. We just give more redox potential. So the conclusion is for redox potential, the lower the redox potential, the higher the antioxidant capacity. And the more the body benefits from the water or food, the more the body is strengthened and protected. So people are typically not aware about electrical charge in water. Low is high quality, high is poor quality. Very simple, but usually not really discussed because, you know, people don't want to go there. I'm not saying it's the most important one, but it's a, a part of these many different facets of healthy water. I, I've said at the beginning of the show, I want to cover all the aspects of water so that you have a conceptual understanding what healthy water is, right? Here's another one, water and descaling. Now, when it rains, water goes into the ground and meets areas of lime, and water binds the lime. That's all it does. Depending on where you live, where the water you're using comes from, the water has more or less lime. So in the areas where you have a lot of lime, the lime level in your tap water is very high. And then the areas in the country where the lime level is very low, consequently, low level of lime. It's not a major, major health issue. Uh, maybe it shouldn't be in the water, but that's the way it is. Lime is not good for your water pipe. It's more harmful to your water pipe than to your body. Right. Uh, it cloaks up the pipes and lime kills eventually your household appliances. So what I do in my technology, I soft descale the lime. 
at the beginning, when I use my products, you see a bit more lime in the water, and then it fades, and every new lime which is coming in is immediately descaled and doesn't attach to the pipes or your home appliances. Um, it doesn't stick in your body either, I take it. No, it just flushes out. It just flushes out. Lime is not unhealthy as such. It's a product of nature. You drink it with the water and you pee it out. It's gone. No. Yeah. It has no health impact. Uh, and once we freed the pipes from appliances from lime, all the new lime coming in will not attach to the water pipe or to the appliances. Now, there are some products offered out there to design to descale the lime. Um, the problem is, from my perspective, that is done is done electricity wise, electrically wise, or with magnets. Now I have some reservation there. I say reservation. These technologies most likely change the natural structure of lime, and in consequences, the properties are not natural anymore. So no. the natural lime comes into your body. The body doesn't need it, recognize it, we don't need it, flushes it out. Now, if you change the natural structure of that lime, it's not natural anymore. The co possible consequences are not highly researched or published. They may have negative effect. I'm not saying it will have. We went ahead and we ignored all that. No magnets, no electricity. In my technology, it's just implemented that we make sure it is not sticking where it's not supposed to stick. It's a side effect we do. Um, welcome side effect. Understood. This has been an extraordinarily fascinating conversation. It really has. Well, we're coming now to the highlight. I've prepared you now with all this information I've, I think I've given you, that you have a conceptual understanding, and now we're coming to the drum roll highlight of the show, and I had to talk about all these other things to prepare you for what's coming now. It's called water and reverse osmosis. Water and reverse osmosis. Now, most likely, reverse osmosis water filtering systems are the most used one, maybe around the globe, definitely in America. True. There are many water filtering systems, but many of them are based. Let me say this. There are many companies who offer water filters, and mostly they are based on reverse osmosis or something in between. Now, to my personal opinion, again, it's my humble personal opinion. For me, reverse osmosis is the devil. And I'll explain you in a minute why. And it seems to me in this water business, people who used to sell secondhand cars or insurances, all of a sudden jumped on this new hype and sell water filtering systems. I met with several of these new salesmen. And after a few sentences and I asked two, three questions, I knew these guys had no idea what they were talking about. They were giving some bullet points, a crash training most likely, go off and sell. So people are more receptive than ever before in history about water, the critical part of water. Okay. Now, a reverse osmosis system works with membranes to which water is pressed. And on the, on, on the packagings, like bottled water, it usually says filtered water or purified water yeah. on the bottle somewhere. Yeah. And these are all reverse osmosis water. So Dasani, for example, one of the most likely most sold water bottles in America from Coca-Cola is a reverse osmosis water system. Nowadays, it's not on the website anymore. A few years ago, they admitted on the website it's municipal water. <laughs> they take municipal water, put it through a reverse osmosis system, and sell it to you. I just looked, checked yesterday. I couldn't find it anymore. It seems to me, I don't know whether somebody listened to my, my too, too good to be true that somebody listened to my presentation and they took it off their website. If you would drink pure reverse osmosis water, you would most likely puke most likely puke. We're getting to this in a moment. And they add what we call 
a, a, a taste filter or throwing some minerals which make some fresh taste to cover up the bad side. So the first thing we have to learn is that reverse osmosis systems were originally never designed for human use. Never, ever. But only for industrial and military use where no minerals were wanted. So do you really believe that the water for machinery is good for your human body? I guess, I guess. They said, let's make money as we have this development technology and sell it to the sheep out there. This crap technology, which looks a bit like that. In variations, these are typical reverse osmosis water filter systems. And again, there are many of them around the planet. Sure. So first point is, it was never intended to use for people. Now, I would say nothing about it if it would be a great quality. It was never intended for a human being, but accidentally they may have found out it's good, right? No rejection, but that's the point. Now, we talked about that water is crucial, the supply of water, and we're ending up in a water crisis, not enough water. Now, a reverse osmosis system is a complete water waste. For each gallon of reverse osmosis water you end up with, depending on the machine, you dump three to six gallons. You get one gallon out of it, and you waste three to six gallons depending on the machine. That's an absolute situation for me in a world which has problems with water. Right. The next point is acidity. I have explained to you acidity. We talked about pH. Reverse osmosis water is always too acidic. We said acidity is unhealthy. We talked about this. Reverse osmosis water has typically a pH of 5.5 to 6.5. Means 10 to 100 times too acidic. And you drink this day out, day in, 100 times too acidic. The toughest cases I found was 4.5, 1,000 times too acidic. Wow. So I was, <laughs> now I was usually, I'm a life coach. I'm not a doctor. I'm a life coach. Uh, I'm a life consultant. And I get called very often when people need energy work and need to change something in their life. And I was called twice. That may be coincident or not. I don't know. I was called twice to people I'm associated with who had all stage four cancer. And when like in one case, the wife called me and I said to this guy for years, leave your cell phone. Don't use your headset, your, your Bluetooth. Don't do it. He was running out of his office day and out, day and night. Sure enough, he developed eye cancer. Another friend of mine, same cell phone thing. He has this wireless thing on his ear. Years. Brain cancer. And when this one wife called me, his wife called me, and I've offered him support by improving his intakes, like water and radiation protection. I knew it was late. He already did all the doctors in the world he knew of. And then said, what the hell, let's talk to an author, right? We've got nothing to lose. Because I'm not a doctor. I don't have the image of being knowledgeable, right? Yeah. So the first thing I do when I come to people, regardless whether they're sick or not sick, the first thing I do, I test their exposure to electromagnetic radiation. The second thing I do, I test their water and the pH of their water. And this particular person here had the lowest pH I ever measured with 4.5 thousand times to acidic. And I said to him, if I would be you, it would be my wife, I say, immediately stop drinking the water and get protection from radiation. He did neither one and two months later he was dead. Now, do I say it was because of the pH of the water, reverse osmosis, and because of the radiation? No, I don't say that that was the reason I say, it could have been contributed, or maybe it was a reason. I don't know. You see, the point is not only you drink reverse osmosis water. You do your coffee with it, and you take showers, typically, right? Yeah. And I made a health test that after a shower, I typically weigh up to one pound more than before the shower. 
because the skin, the biggest organ of your body, absorbs the water. So if you have unhealthy water to drink is one thing, and if you still shower with unhealthy water, that's another thing. So bottom line is too acidic. All reverse osmosis waters are acidic. And I did a show in Germany, uh, and after that show, where I talked about this a few years ago, this woman called me and said, hey, listen, I, I heard your show. I was fighting for years with health, and I th thought I did everything right. And when you talked about reverse osmosis and the pH, I went down in my basement and I tested it, and you were bloody right. It was 5.0 uh, 5 pH. So no wonder I'm sick, but I didn't know. Wow. Okay. Good. So that's point three, why I despise reverse osmosis. Point number four, we call it hungry water. The reverse osmosis filter removes basically anything from the water, which always includes possible toxins, but also all minerals that our body should have. Now what happens, the moment the water enters the body, it has no minerals, it attracts the minerals in your body like a magnet. That means it only brings no minerals, but what, like healthy water does, but it deprives the body of minerals. It typically extracts the minerals even out of your bones. Maybe, maybe one of the reasons for osteoporosis, surely from candida. Now, how does it happen that these people sell their products? What these salesmen typically do, they come to your house, they say, give me a bit of your water, tap water. Yeah. Then they put some chemicals in tap water and they stir it and you see there a lot of material floating into the water, in your water, right? And you say, see, this is what you're drinking. And look here, this is reverse osmosis water. Nothing, hardly anything. And you're drinking all this gummy stuff here. They don't tell the people, the majority of what the people see there is no gummy stuff. This is just uh, the calcium, for example, which is not unhealthy. If the body gets too much calcium, it just doesn't use it. But that's a dirty trick to get you to sign the dotted line. You don't want to drink sure. that water, right? People say, of course not, of course not. And they buy these systems, which are typically the price range between four and $6,000. Now, the word has gone around that people know about this mineral thing. Uh, that it uh, takes it out. And now comes their, what I call the last dirty trick. They say, well, yeah, you're right. Or they even bring it up before they bring it up as a technique of selling it. Uh, you may have heard this, blah, 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 blah. But that's not a problem. You go and take some minerals in a health food store and throw it in the water. It's for me like saying, eat McDonald's and then eat some vitamins and you have good food. Right. So the next point, number five, why I not agree with reverse osmosis system, it possibly creates fungus. Fungus can grow because of reverse osmosis water. There were tests executed in watering plants in a farm with regular water and a separate group of plants watering reverse osmosis. Yeah. Plants watered with reverse osmosis showed by tendency black fungus. When you use reverse osmosis water for spouting uh, seeds, in seven out of ten times, they found out there was fungus growing in on the plants. Wow, look at that. And I mentioned before this book from this German lady, uh, The Water and Beverage Mafia, right? And she writes in that book about reverse osmosis water, another risk source of the risk of bacterial contamination of the membrane which independent tests repeatedly detect. Bacterial contamination. Norbert, Which I just had a thought pop into my head here. Why, uh, why? I've known about this reverse osmosis thing for, I mean, since the 90s. But I always uh, found the brine tank that they wanted to accompany the under sink reverse osmosis part to be a little suspect. Can, do you know why any kind of a brine tank was included? Was that just for softening water using saline, or what's that all about? Sorry, I never came across this Brian tank. Okay, all right, forget about it. We'll move on. It was weird. But, uh, but keep one I thing never do get a straight answer about it. 
Well, that may be that may be the answer. Keep in mind, I mentioned before. I think I mentioned before. If not, I'll do it now. If you drink pure or immersed osmosis water, you would most likely puke. Yeah. So bad it tastes that you would most likely puke. So they add on, like Dasani says, we add on minerals for taste. They say we add on minerals for taste. They say it. We add on minerals for taste. <laughs> right. And uh, I believe they used to have an extra um, taste filter added at the end of the process of reverse osmosis. They added an extra system to improve the taste. So they call it taste filter. Okay. Well, Norbert, it seems that this reverse osmosis thing became all the rage. I saw a number of different kinds of... Uh, filters out there, but RO, oh look, RO water, reverse osmosis and all that. I suppose at the end of the day, it doesn't seem like it was much of an improvement over what was coming out of the tap. Is that fair or an unfair thing to say? Well, it's absolutely fair to say, and uh, um, most likely, so what we have nowadays in the city water, the city water, I consider the city water um, as as less problematic than reverse osmosis water. Remember earlier on, we talked about the test from the Mazuru Emoto Laboratory yes. when they tested my products and they took reverse osmosis water. Let me repeat what I said there. They took reverse osmosis water, which shocked me. And they said, no, 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 we take reverse osmosis water because it's the worst water there is. They said, <laughs> it's the worst water there is. And if your product can rehabilitate this quality of bad water, then you have a winner, right? So no, no, no. Here comes now the last part of my reverse osmosis presentation, which is the membranes. You know, the reverse osmosis water system um, look a bit like this. They have a membrane. This membrane is typically many times not manufactured by the company who does the reverse osmosis water filters system, but by contractors from the pharmaceutical industry. And here's the reason why. The, in order to filter everything out except the water molecules, these holes in the membrane have to be extremely small. Extremely small. And to my definition, I think you can agree with it when you see this in a moment, uh, it has nothing to do with physical fabricated holes. This is the, the diagram. You see the human hair. This big round ball there is the human hair, okay? And then you yep. see in the middle, in the center, that small little blue dot in the middle of the center. This is the hole of a membrane, in the membrane. I mean, there are hundreds and thousands of them holes, okay? Yeah. Now imagine the diameter of a hair. And then this little hole in the center. And here is the size of this unit. The pore size is 0.1 nanometers, a tenth of a millionth of a millimeter. Make it easier for the American audience. Um, you see that the American diameters, a tenth of a millionth of 0.04 inches. <laughs> wow. Okay. I can't even think in this size. Okay. What does that mean? Well, here's the crooks. This pore size, you cannot manufacture with physical elements. Right? No. There's no needle in this world, which is so thin. So how do you get the holes in the membrane? How do you get the holes in the membrane? That's the big question. Yes, indeed. Well, for me, the only explanation is through radiation. Radiation frequency can do that. Now, if I'm right, and I repeat, if I am right, they create these holes 
through radiation frequencies in the membrane. Now I go back to what we discussed earlier. The world is based on frequency and information. If I shoot through material, uh, radioactive material, that frequency of that radiation will be in that material. Can you follow me? I am. So, all the water, now if that radiation frequency material is in the material, all the water flowing now, floating now through the holes, learning what we learned about frequency and information, the water, to my opinion, will pick up this frequency. So now you're consuming water with this radiation frequency. Bon appétit. Wow. Well, it only took 30 years for this information to come out to the public, right? 30 years. I had a German, um, in a German talk show, I talked about this. And I said um, that um, all reverse osmosis manufacturer and salespeople should be taken to court by public prosecution for harming the human body by intention. And this German company took me to court, this quick court, their overnight decision, I was in America, which doesn't allow me to say this anymore as a statement. Now I say it as a question. So if I'm right, that could be the cause. Okay. Okay. So reverse osmosis water. What do we have? 10, 100,000 times too acidic. Um, we have I can't these- believe these numbers. <clears throat> Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. That's, that's no, no, amazing. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we talked about um, the money system cost, three to six thousand um, dollars. And here is an image from Dasani water. And you can see, they say, not me, Dasani is purified water with enhanced, sorry, water enhanced with minerals for a pure, fresh taste. Okay. They say it. <laughs> right. You just have to read the label. I'm not inventing that stuff. No, I'm it's not there. inventing that stuff. It's there. Right? Yep. Minerals added for taste. Because as I said, if you drink the pure water, uh, you would puke. You cannot drink it. All right. So this is, to my opinion, the problem with the reverse osmosis water. Yeah. I give you all the reasons I personally have, to my opinion. And I showed you before, if you remember, um, how the Mazuro Emoto lab tested the reverse osmosis water here on the left side. Unbelievable. And the right side after being rehabilitated by my technology. This is the totally destroyed structure of reverse osmosis water. And I rehabilitated it. Unbelievable. It, it really is. All of this stuff that we thought, oh, that's nice. And we, we see your presentation here and it's like, no, it's not nice. Well, John, when, we young, when we were young, they came up with the uh, microwave oven, right? Yeah. And we thought, oh, yeah. You, yeah, heat up the coffee in two seconds. Uh, baby, I'm uh, working out. Your, your, your food is in the microwave. Press start. Okay. Yeah. And we thought, how cool is that, right? And it took us quite some decades to know that we were screwed. And in case right. somebody out there using microwave oven still for the food in the water, Please stop. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. I guess. I guess. It's just a, although I, I must I must tell you, I uh, I thought from the very beginning of the whole microwave oven thing was highly suspect. I, I, I never, in fact, uh, I've told the story a few times, so I'll be brief. I, uh, I put my left hand into a uh, an old school Amana radar range that was still at CBS television series 20 years ago. 
But I opened the door after uh, heating up some uh, disgusting, you know, snack room chili. And even though the thing had been shut off and sat there for a few seconds, I opened the door and sparks started flying off my watch. I reached in with my left hand, sparks started flying off my watch. And I thought, well, I don't think I'll be heating anything else up in here. That that just doesn't look good to me. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. There... <laughs> yeah. So oh, we're coming man. towards the end of my presentation, very much to the end. Um, and let me uh, remind you again that typically water has all these particles in the water. And... Um, and one of them is chloramine. A lot of people don't know what chloramine is. It's chlorinated water plus ammonia. Chlorinated water plus ammonia. There are even warnings issued that chloramine is not safe for fish and other marine animals, but it's safe for human beings, right? Yeah. Um, chloramine is very hard to remove from the water, much harder than chlorine, but Again, um, the way I take it, um, if you have, well, look, if you have water filter systems out there who do the job, right? Go ahead and use them. If they do the job, if you're sure, if they have proved do the job, go ahead and use them. But uh, the road I took is a different one. Um, however, uh, I came only across so far one water filter system in America and one in Germany, uh, which makes sense. Uh, such a system to put the uh, facts on the table for an under sink system only for under sink is about two thousand dollars for a complete house system is about ten thousand dollars okay um and even if you have those systems um you still use my products and to give you an idea what we're talking about my blue water thingy is 800 bucks to put a price tag to it, 800 bucks warranty for 10 years, right? And yeah. this you should add on, regardless what water filter system you have, you should add it on, okay? Um, coming to the end, there is a paragraph, I call it the protection of water, protection of your water. You must protect your water. Yes, you heard me correctly. Um, you remember that we talked about that um, Water, electromagnetic radiation destroys water, right? Here's again the image which we had before. That's yes. my radiation and microwave oven and so on and cell phones destroy your water, which means you have to protect your water. And what I have done is I solved this problem with a product, product line, Smart Defenders 4G, 5G. Uh, and if there are other products out there, be my guest. So, in other words, you have healthy water, let's assume. You must protect the water from electromagnetic radiation. And I have different offers here. You can see it on the website, and we have different shows with John. Uh, these are all the same products that do the same, just to cover different spaces, uh, different areas, and uh, easier applications. So, you must protect your water. The second thing is the presence of harmful substances of harmful substances of um, in the water, in the food. Um, and I came up with a solution there. I just want to scratch the surface. It's called SD2 Food Protect. So here we protect the food. We nullify all negative frequencies or harmful substances in food and beverages. And uh, you can find this on my website. Here is the link. And uh, here is the link for the 5G protection. You can study, I have many seminars there, talk shows with John. I just want to scratch the surface. I know first, it. First get the right water and then make sure you have your water protected, okay? Yes. This so, is uh, what, yeah. stunning. It's really stunning information. Sorry, I, I just I couldn't restrain myself. But uh, you know I've talked at length about many of these things. But uh, this presentation has been uh, quite an eye-opener, to put it really, really mildly. Well, I've tried to put it in a context so you can understand. You have a conceptual understanding of water, you know? 
So my summary now for you guys is, we're bringing it home, um, the body is physical, and we live in a world where we deal with physical situations. I always hear this thing about mind over matter. Yeah, okay, my mind is stronger than all these influences. If you have reached that level, God bless you. The majority of us are still working on it, and we may not reach that level for an hour later mind over matter so if it rains outside and you go outside in the rain your mind tells you i'm not getting wet and you're not getting wet that would be mind over matter you stay underwater two three four minutes and not die because of lacks of oxygen that would be mind over matter we're all working on it if we're spiritual beings we work on it we have a spiritual awareness and which is covered up for many of us through whatever life stories and stories of this planet there are and people who don't want us to realize that we are spiritual beings because you cannot control spiritual beings. We, by definition, are spiritual beings. I'm believing that I would be born again, and I've seen it many times that I've been born. There are many reasons you can have dementia, Parkinson, cancer, all other illnesses, deficiencies. If we even live as much a spiritual being as we can these illnesses affect us as a spiritual being because you cannot free yourself from these troubles to explore your spiritual awareness we have to defend ourselves against all these arts the big industry they will never help us the government will never do this we have to make sure we have healthy food healthy water free from economic radiation this is a fight against all influences. So we have certain functions and we must support the functions of the body. And the more that we, we, we support it, the less we are sick, the more we can work as spiritual beings and act as spiritual beings. Everything else is a distraction. Illness is a distraction. And when I see what's happening in this world, it always, for me, headline is distracting, distracting. The technology I offer and the products are supposed to help you to be a free, freer spiritual being if you take your part in being a spiritual being. All my products are made in Germany, come with a 10-year warranty, are certified by the Visa Institute of Austria, and have for now a free charge upgrade. I will always try to upgrade the products to perform better because I come across new solutions. When I come across new solutions, I'll put them in my products. It's a never ending thing. I'm, I'm standing at the beginning of something. I'm not at the end, not at the finish line. By far not, I'm not, not at the finish line. My products, W100, 300, the water products, what do they do? They rehabilitate water. The bottom line is we're nulling negative information. We rehabilitate the hexagonal structure, so it's fine clustered, what they say. We improve condition of red blood cells. We rehabilitate and reinstore minerals. We stabilize the pH. We do soft descaling. We improve the redox potential. And again, my landing page, go there, find out, talk to me, ask me questions. Yes. If you're listening, it's improveyourlife.us. And uh, I suppose it's uh, true and really. At the very last stage of my presentation, I want to thank you. I want to thank John and Brandy for giving me the opportunity to meet with you. I want to thank um, my employees. Without, I would not be able to do what I'm doing. I thank my co-engineers which in many cases are better than myself. I love it. I love it if you have people who know more than me. It's the only way to learn. And I want to thank now a gentleman which you never heard of and never will, Otto Mayotte Schwabedis. And without him, I would never have ended in what I'm doing today, which is not the end, which is the beginning. He was the biggest inspiration when I was very sick and I thought I would die. This is 40 years ago. Interesting story how he and me met. We did together. I want to thank uh, Royal Raymond Reif, who discovered the um, fact that even illnesses have frequencies 
and uh, the FDA took him out. I want to thank Max Planck, one of the greatest physicists around, German countryman, with whom I wouldn't have what I have today. And of course, Nikola Tesla. These are all people who contributed with their work and the knowledge to help me what I'm doing today, to inspire me and to give me badly needed information. And there's one guy, which is hardly known even in Germany, for me, one of the greatest physicists ever. His name is Burkhard Hein. His life story is a story with no comparison. Um, and uh, when, when I talk about the nullifying of information, um, most of what I'm doing there, I got out of his work. And Dr. Masuro Emoto, we talked about him today, and you understand where he is, where he comes from. All right. Astounding. That will be the end of my presentation. You know, Norbert, I started to say a while ago, um, when you think about it, it is what we're experiencing right now all across the world is spiritual warfare. And remember, folks, energy, frequency, vibration. How is it that all of these things at the very, very beginning were spoken into existence? Energy, frequency, and vibration. Norbert Heuser, thank you very much. You know, I think we're overdue on this. I really do. You have gloriously illustrated and vindicated the right of the individual to be an individual. And I hereby induct you into our order of the Ark Knights. And this assembly rises to you, Sir Norbert Heuser. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, guys, for the platform. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for hanging in that long time. Thank you very much. God bless you. Consider of his speeches deeply. Do your own research. Do it. If you have access to the internet, you can do it. And uh, stay tuned because there will be much more to come in the days and weeks and months and hopefully years ahead. But let's keep those three things in mind. Energy, frequency, and vibration. Thanks for watching.